All right, we're filling up in here. Nobody's taking the front row. This is where you, everybody gets wet with the water bottle. Oh, no, it's not that kind of show. <laughs> oh. Oh, play. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. Oh, why is it not in presenter? I'm getting a pop-up. Just don't mess with this. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, if you made it available offline, just go ahead. Or, I tried. It's giving me... Here we go. Presenter mode. I just want to see my notes. It's fine. You're still stuck over there. So not what, 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 what? Okay, give me a moment. How much time we got? Oh, 10 minutes. Okay. Thank you. Ah, this is the presentation. I see. Okay, okay, okay. That's the presentation. Yeah, okay. Hit the green one. Where's my mouse? 
Ah. Uh. <laughs> no, no notes still. What? That's really weird. How was it? I just heard three new patients today. Three new patients? I like that. You have your notes? I'll just, I'll just click and open it from but here. The problem being is that whatever you just done, you isolated the other one again, so you have to stop. Oh. How come I can't see my... Uh, hmm. Either live without the notes or... I'll, I can wing it. I'll do my best. Okay, I'm winging it tonight. Oh, and we're on live YouTube, too. Oh. Am I live? Which camera? Hi, Mom. Actually, Mom's watching. All right, I better take off the jacket. This is going to be too much pressure. So we're actually live? Should I start? No, we got to wait for everybody. Okay. Gosh, no. Okay. All right. Control shift enter. I'm going to do my best. We'll work it out. Sorry. I've got 40 slides, so each section should about 10 minutes. 10 to 15 vision will be the longest, and so we'll mark it in first and last. <laughs> I'm trying not to stare, I know. Everybody's trying to eat their sandwiches before. I think Martin's got the camera pointed at you guys as well. For the online audience. I made sure to send my mom a, a, a link, so that's all that matters, right? And a couple of my clients, too. It's like, yeah, this is some good stuff in here you need to listen to. I, right? Well, she's going to give me two thumbs up. Two oh, bleach right here. They need. Oh, and then we're getting can cookies passed around. Good. All right.
Rebecca. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, we can. Mouse. There you go. And when it should, let's see. Can we have the address bar? Is that okay? Huh? I don't want to mess with it. I got it so close, and I got notes this time, too. Are they, are they hearing me online at uh, YouTube.com? Oh, hi everybody out there. Is there how many uh, how many we got on live? Besides my mom. I love it. We're getting there. Is this somebody saving this spot or what's this jacket? Yeah? Okay, good. Is that them? Oh good, oh good, good, good. So she'll be joining in Houston. Oh, I'll give more details at the end. Evening, everybody. I'm Martin Van Tassel. Normally, I don't need to use a microphone in this room, but uh, we are using uh, some of our technology to broadcast to folks uh, who are uh, attending this remotely, and that's always going to where well, we're trying to make this an option for all of our events or most of our events. Uh, so that uh, you know, people who are living in remote areas or you know, where it would be a long drive to come in, or uh, that they can get the advantages of membership, no matter where they are. Um, but they do have to take a quiz, which you guys here will not have to do <laughs> here. Uh, that being said, uh, our program here uh, is uh, is going to be uh, uh, focused on uh, it's for the dentist and uh, the office managers primarily. Uh, but these events are sponsored and supported by uh, some companies that, uh, uh, without which it would be very difficult for us to put them on. I, I'd like to introduce uh, Lori Paddock or Phillips, uh, and she hopefully has had a chance to meet each of you as, you, as you've come in. And we're also going to do a little uh, uh, raffle for uh, so an air floss, and you have a good shot of winning. Um, oh, <laughs> um, we also so I'm with Sonicare and Zoom as well, and we started a new program. If you want a deep discount for your patients, um, you can order online Sonicare. They get a deep discount. You get a 10% commission on everything, and we just track it, send you a check quarterly. I'm happy to go over this more information later. My card. But otherwise, do you, um, so the air floss, if you haven't seen it, is kind of similar to, I should have brought it, um, similar to a water pick. It's a little bit more powerful. And I love it because you can put in chlorhexidine, salt water, uh, whatever you want to put in it. Very easy, great for implants. So I'm also including an article from Dentistry Today. Protect your implant, they're very pricey. So this is a great way to do it. And so good luck, everyone. Are you going to choose? Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> pick a good one. No, no names on it, so I'm just, just going to pick the. I'm going to pick the number, and the number is eight seven one three seven seven. Oh, so close. Eight seven one three seven seven. 
Yes. Air flosser, you could put Ocho anything seis, in there, she said. Uno, tres, I keep putting coffee seis, seis. and red wine in mine, but it's my teeth still are getting stained. <laughs> You know, since I've been here, um, it, it, I've uh, run into uh, uh, Dominic uh, a number of times. He's uh, been a sponsor of some of our programs, and 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 uh, he's been in the dental field for over 16 years. Uh, he uh, has worked for Fortune 500 companies and has uh, received his. Uh, Sigma six designation, I believe. And I don't know what designation I got. We'll well, we'll talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> he's uh, been working with. Uh, started in 2003, working with his uh, personal dentist and helping uh, turn his practice around, improve collections, and uh, become uh, completely free of uh, uh, a, a complete complete fee for service um, practice, and. Uh, He's uh, been really focused on the success of dentists throughout the area, and he's got a lot of ideas that might, uh, hopefully there'll be some takeaways uh, with uh, this program. And uh, without uh, further ado, I give you Dominic Farnucci. Thank you very much. Yes, Martin, awesome. I love it, thank you very much. I couldn't have said it better myself. I probably would have stumbled on the Six Sigma as well. Uh, you know, actually, the, and he reminded me, and I'm going to probably have a couple of stories. Am I too far to the side if I'm going to hit over here? Okay. Uh, I probably, it added, I'm going to add a couple stories tonight because I, uh, I do have a big heart for dentistry. So, uh, but um, without further ado, I do want to say thank you. I, I was going to do an intro. So my notes, so we're, we're playing with technology tonight. So forgive us as we're, as I cheat off my laptop tonight. Um, but thank you very much, Sonicare. I love my Sonicare and Martin and Matthew, you guys are awesome. Okay, uh, I want to do a little introduction, a little more. Uh, uh, guess which one's me? Uh, it's one of my practices and uh, I met them at CDA. We had a lot of fun. I have been working in dental since 2003. My dentist called me and asked if I wanted to come and run his practice and I jumped. Yes, well, yeah, of course. It was a Good Friday, 2003, and I thought it was my miracle. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm there. I can't wait. And they're like, well, uh, you know, let, maybe hold on a second. And I'm like, whoa, no, I'll take it. I'll take it. I was begging for the job. I thought it would be prestigious. Please, I'll be right there. It was 5 o'clock. I hadn't shaved. I was home all day. I worked in finance at the time. And I'm like, I'm on my way. I wanted to run his dental practice so bad. And they, no, 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 come tomorrow morning, Saturday morning. I was like, I'll be there at 7. No, come at 9. Okay. All right, and then she goes, because we have a, this was his wife at that point. She says, we have a, a, an interview at 11. I'm like, don't hire anybody. I was there for half an hour in the parking lot. I couldn't wait. <clears throat> and so I got in there, and I begged for the job. I wanted to run the dental practice. I loved him. And, you know, there's something about the relationship that you guys have, dentists and the team have with your patients that are really precious. I love my dentist. I had, since I moved here in Sonoma County, moved from San Francisco in 92, and I was, I love my dentist. One of the things, and I wanted to relate this, when he was telling the story, I started thinking about it and reminded me, dentists are in our face. And, you know, of course you get a lot of patients who sit down and go, well, I, I, you know, I hate the dentist and, you know, and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, there's a relationship that's built. And we're going to talk about relationships a little bit tonight. I thought it was really important that, uh, that the relationship I had, I loved him being, not that he was in my face, but I loved showing up. I'd always had a four o'clock or 4.30 appointment because I would commute from the city. And I would bend the suction, I'd get a mirror, and I'd say, okay, I want to talk about the Niners and finance and cars, and because he was a Rams fan, so it was easy. And then I'd go, all right, go, ah, you know, and he'd start doing things. I still don't know what is his restaurant, you know, it didn't matter, but I loved talking with him and hanging out. We'd stay late and be talking. And it, it's so accessible to have a doctor be accessible. But those of us who go to doctors, MDs, we get our five minutes, six minutes, and it's. I even to this day still feel a lot of pressure when I'm getting an exam, or I've got to, usually it's a sliver up my fingernail or something crazy. And that said, 
there's never time. You can feel that rush, and I don't feel that accessibility. Whereas, you know, when I'm sitting in front of a doctor and a dentist or a patient sitting in front of a dentist, you know, you're there for an hour sometimes or longer, and it's real intimate. It's a precious thing. I thought it was precious. So I, I'm there on that Saturday morning begging for this job, and he was looking at me like, why, why do you want this job? I didn't realize everybody had quit uh, the whole practice. Uh, I didn't realize that was something that happened. Uh, I learned a lot in my tenure, but as I'm begging for that job, he says, well, this is usually second income, like wives work. And that didn't register at the time, but it caught me later. Because as we spent three years doubling the practice and we got off Delta, that was a, a huge monumental thing. And traveled the world for dentistry, did all the stuff that he wanted to do. I didn't, you know, to me it was like, what do you want to do? We're gonna talk about that in a moment. Let's do it. Um, I didn't understand that it was, uh, it was treated like it's not an important job. And before everybody filled into, and I shouldn't say it's not an important job, it was a very important job. The challenge was that he didn't see it like the need for it to be high, um, I'm getting distracted, hi, welcome, uh, the high value of that front office because of that front office position. And as before you guys all shuffled in, a few of us were talking, and we were talking about I, what I love about dental and dental people, especially this. Here it is a Tuesday night. You guys are all here, dentists and team members here, like doing continuing ed. I never saw that in the corporate world. We did stuff on, at work, and that was it, and we were gone. So I always was very impressed. I think that the education and the, the, the striving to grow is huge in dental. So I felt like it was more of a mindset in my doctor. So it was fun watching him change and it was a neat thing for me because that's where I really got my teeth in the entrepreneurial running a practice. Oh, and I also want to introduce Jenna. Jenna, smile. She's in the back. She's texting me. What are you saying over there? Hurry up. Stop talking about everything. <laughs> Jenna and I have been working together for eight years. I hired her down in Millbrae in a practice and uh, I've stolen her <laughs> ever since and she's been following me and works in a lot of my practices. She's amazing. Uh, now she remotes in and does account cleanups, does insurance cleanups. I, it's so valuable. I couldn't do what I do without her. Abraham Maslow. Not everybody knows this person's name. I didn't even know, real, realize he, this is the person who came up with the quote. Um, he was a psychology professor, and he invented, he, he um, famous for the hierarchy of needs. I forgot it already. But he also came up with this quote, which I love. I suppose it is tempting if the only tool you have is a hammer to treat everything as if it were a nail. The, the old uh, paradigm of, uh, or the, the idiom of, uh, if all you have is a hammer, then everything's a nail. Uh, it makes sense if you can picture my seven-year-old when I give him a hammer. By the way, he gave me this this morning. He wanted me to wear this tonight. Because uh, we're going to be talking about tools. And so he did want me to, he, he thought, Papa, you should wear my tool belt because I've been putting this uh, presentation together for you guys, so that was for him. I'm not gonna wear it the whole time, maybe each chapter. But tools, and that's the whole point. Running our practices takes tools. So tonight I'm gonna give, I've got seven chapters, seven tools that I wanna give you guys. There's gonna be enough to go home with that I want, to, I, what I, I've always found is every time I'd go to a class, there was too much and I wouldn't implement any of it, and that's common. So my goal, my number one goal tonight is to motivate you guys to do something, some actions. Take something. Uh, all of this, by the way, I do, I live up here in Sonoma County. I live in the Russian River. I'm high and dry, although we get flooded in or flooded out, which I did a couple weeks ago. Um, but today, as I was in charge of printing all the printouts, uh, guess whose power went out with the high wind? <laughs> yeah, so I will email all of you the printouts that I have in the uh, presentation. So without further ado, thank you, Abraham Maslow. That'll be on the quiz. I had to come up with a quiz too, you'll see. The, the online people will see. All right. Okay, here we go, now we're going. Oh yeah, I already said this. Take lots of notes, are we got notes? You got paper, who needs paper and pens? We'll, over here we got a few people, hey Martin. Can we get some, uh, any extra pads of paper and some of those fancy farmer's pens? Another uh, vendor here. I have been a vendor and I've, been, I've worked at booths here uh, for Reds many times. And if, I don't know if anybody recognized me. I used to run around with a camera a few years ago and I would take a bunch of photos for Reds. I loved it. I'm not hyper. 
and this is, so we got people online who, oh yes, raise your hands. Who would like, who would like to take notes? Ooh, that's a trick question. Who wants to take notes? <laughs> there, I will point out some things I want you to write down. Um, Martin's throwing pens again. So uh, we have online people. They're going to be typing questions. You guys feel free to talk at me too. Um, Matthew will interrupt me. He'll, th he'll throw, if there's a comment or there's a question, he'll throw it at me. Pretty neat, 2019, I love it. Okay, now we begin. Did you guys get a, did he run away? Oh, we are passing it out. Okay, good. And we've got some Dr. Genius folders. By the way, we didn't announce Dr. Genius yet. Uh, chapter seven, tool seven, marketing. I brought Dr. Genius up from Southern California. Uh, I work very closely with D'Artagnan. You're going to get to meet him. He's actually going to help me do the presentation on Chapter 7, Marketing. So uh, we're going to, but if you need a folder now, can I pass it? Would you? Thank you, D'Artagnan. And while you're doing that, I'm going to, I'll read my next quote. I love quotes. Helen Keller said, the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. That's pretty, kind of a heavy one. I'll let that sink in. Very true, right? Tool number one is vision. That's, that's why I had, to, I had preempted. I looked it up. I thought it was a good one, though. All right, start with a vision. Vision is everything. And I'll tell you, when I worked in dental, when I first started in my first practice working with my dentist, I didn't realize he didn't have a vision. He didn't have a vision. He was just, you know, like I said, everybody had quit his office, and he was left to figure it out. What I did and what, I've, what I do to this day is just listening to him grouse and, and getting through it and process and staying out late and, and talking about everything that was going on in his practice, I would dig to find out what is it he wants. And so, so I, was, I was formulating for him the ability to think about or plan the future with imagination or wisdom. I was putting together what he wanted and I would get agreement. He wanted to travel the world for dentistry. Has anybody ever been to the Chicago Midwinter? Yes. It's pretty warm and toasty, huh? No. No, no it's not. You have to love dentistry or, or you're getting the best deal of something because it's very cold. <laughs> very cold. Uh, we also went to the UK Dental Show, which alternates between Birmingham and, and uh, London every year. Awesome. And the uh, European Dental Show, huge, huge. So I was... I was putting together his vision. He, he wanted to go, he wanted to travel. I was figuring out where he wanted to go. He wanted to also lecture. So we built a facility that actually another dentist has purchased since then, and it's out in Rincon Valley. He wanted to lecture. We made sure to build a facility that was big enough to have a lecture room in it. Vision is the why you do what you do. So I, I'm going to dig into this, I, I, because we don't, not a lot of times people talk about vision. Some of you do, some of you don't. I don't know if you read into it. Vision's deep. Uh, if you're going to write a note, what, do this. Simon Sinek wrote a book called Start With Why. You don't have to read the book. YouTube his TED Talk on Start With Why. Simon Sinek. Phenomenal. 17 minutes. Get that. Watch this 18-minute one, the 17-minute one. That's the good one. All right. Quite often I talk with doctors. I meet doctors. 60-year-old doctors, I hear this the most. This isn't where I thought I would be. And I would always ask, where'd you think you were going to be? I, 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 not here. It was always not here. We're having a vision talk. I'll have a, having a vision talk with a 60-year-old is a lot different than 30, 40, and 50, but, uh, but we still have to have that talk and figure out where we're going. I have a vision, too. I, my vision, I want to visit Italy every year and, and stay with my family and uh, hang out with them. Last year when I went to Italy, I was, this is, a, this is on the test, by the way. Last year when I went to Italy, I, uh, I was hanging out and they, the family was asking me, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? And I was thinking, well, when can I come back? Oh, I'll come back at Thanksgiving because I'm trying to think when I can you know, get out of school, get, you know, get us all coordinated. And my cousin, she's a translator, so she, my family's all there. And I don't normally talk this slow. <laughs> so they, so they're, they needed some translating. But when I said, oh, I'll come at Thanksgiving, and she, so she's telling everybody, and she turns, and she goes, oh, we've always wanted a Thanksgiving. And I know, right? And I didn't, wasn't thinking that. I was thinking the timing. But yeah, so 
we're going to have a Thanksgiving uh, in in Italy. They're going to they're going and I was telling them about sweet potatoes. They'd never heard of it. Sweet potatoes. Of course, I went to the grocery store. They're right there. It's like, oh, you guys just don't eat sweet potatoes. By the way, it's pronounced ringraziamento. That's how you say uh, Thanksgiving. Ringraziamento. I learned that. Okay. So I was telling one of my practices. I have a three million dollar practice that because uh, he's co he's he's asking. Okay, tell me about your what you what are you going to talk about? And I'm, I'm starting with vision. He goes, oh, I don't like vision. What? No, I like goals. I like goals. Like no, it's vision and goals are very different. And so I while we're talking. I said, well, why do you? He has a three million dollar practice. I said, why do you want a three million dollar practice? And he didn't answer right away. I, I went off. I was coaching the front office, and I came back uh, right before lunch, and he said, I have some answers for you. And, he, and so I sat down. I started typing on my iPad. What is it? He, he, what is it too? I was like, oh, why do I want this three million dollar practice? Either one. Uh, I don't want to work alone in a $1 million practice where it's all on me. Well, that's fair. He, you know, wanting, what does he want? He doesn't want that. I've never really been a big producer, and I don't really want the big cases. It's not, that's not the kind of doctor that I am. Okay, fair enough. He does great dentistry, but he does its, its bread and butter. It's, it's, it's solid bridges, crowns, fillings, very good work. Um, he talked about it. He says, it fits my personality because I enjoy running the business and looking at the numbers which I thought, you know, that does fit him. And he says, it also allows me to hire people like you, he's pointing to me, to help him run his business. I love that. And it affords me the lifestyle I want. Like, okay, that he actually does have, a, that is his why. That's why he runs a $3 million practice. He sees his last patient by one, he's out. Uh, he's got two employee dentists, 16, 16 days of hygiene and four. And he loves it. He absolutely loves it. That's, but here's why he does it. He, so he did have a why. More quotes. If the ladder is not leaning against the right wall, every step we take just gets us to the wrong place faster. And that's important. That's Stephen Covey. I love that one. Seven habits. All right. So I said this a moment ago. Vision is not goals. See, goals are what we do every day. Goals is trying to achieve our numbers, trying to get things done. All right. Think of the ladder and the wall. The ladder is the goals to get to where we're going. All right. I usually, by the way, because we're on YouTube tonight, I have all kinds of, I usually have more memes and pictures and I'm explaining this, but I had to turn it all into graphics because I can't, uh, because we don't want to get a violation strike live. All right. When we know where we, where we want to go, we can plan on how to get there. Now, this is important and I'm a, I really wanted to talk about vision. This is a big thing for all of us, all ages and all, everybody. The two Daniellas. Is it Daniellas, right? Of Daniel 1 and 2. It's important. The reason why we all should have a plan. What do we want? Physically, emotionally, relationships, business. I have uh, four categories and in my, what I'm going to be emailing everybody, uh, you'll get some breakdowns of how to look at what you want. It's just brief. And it's for everyone. All of us should have a vision. And it should, and keep it, keep updating it. So in the flyers, when I, when I email you, I want you to print them. Keep the piece of paper. On one side, it says, it probably says handout. Let me see here. Yeah. On one side, it just says, I want, and it explains. When you hear, and I've trained myself to hear, I want. So if somebody says to me, oh, I, I want a Porsche, and blah, 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 and they're just talking, I'm triggered. I catch it. That person wants a Porsche. If I hear, I want, I want ice cream tonight. I think that's what they truly want because they, they didn't have to think about it. If I was calling you guys tonight or if I called on online and asked them to, to tell us what they think, what they want, they would think about it. they think, what does Dominic want to hear? I don't want to sound greedy in front of other people. It, 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 we freeze. This is for you. A little piece of paper is just empty bullets on one side. When you hear yourself or you hear somebody else say, I want, jot it down. It's tremendous. I've caught myself. This is something I just built in because people, it's, when I ask somebody what they want, they're very hard pressed to tell me. But when they're, we're just talking, the I wants do flow. So if you guys are hearing each other, team members, spouses, when somebody's mentioning something I want and it just comes out flippantly, that's probably a true want. It's kind of a neat thing. Take your time, answer those questions on the back that I got from a fantastic YouTube channel, five minute channel at the bottom. It, it's a link to where it is. All right, write it down, write it down often. It's okay to change your mind. 
because I think I'm going to want to go, oh, don't cheat. I, don't wanna, I think I want to go to Italy twice a year now. I think I'm going to change it to twice. All right. Tool number two, how are we for time? Excellent. If I had six hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend four hours sharpening my ax. I love that one. No, no nods, nobody cares about that. I love that. It was one of my favorite ones. Huh? I like it. Right? I saw a guy trying to cho uh, chop a, uh, cut a stump out of my yard. I, I said I live in the Russian River. All stumps, right? Uh, it took him six hours, and he kept dulling his, uh, his saw. He went through blades and everything else. Uh, he was hitting a rock inside the stump. But I wish I could say, oh, he came with a dull saw, but that it wouldn't apply. All right, tool number two, <laughs> right? We're going we're gonna to sharpen the ax. So we're jumping. Was there any comments? I'm sorry. I should have even asked about vision. Vision, I went through quickly. I, no comments? Anything online? Online, you guys have any questions? Just pop it over. Matthew will read them to me. Or comments. Because we're going to jump into tool two, but we can always go back. Tool number two, effective meetings. Who has meetings? Yeah. Who has effective meetings? <laughs> yeah. Is there, it's not easy. I'm going to try and give you some tools to apply to having effective meetings. I always talk about this. The, the difference between working in your business, that's doing the work, versus on your business, that's preparing. And that's a big thing. We work in our business. When I have my vision outlined, I put business last. I put my spiritual stuff, my relationship stuff, my personal development stuff first. Because if I put business first, that's all I would do, is I'd be just working in my business. So it's hard. When we're at work, we're working always. We're constantly. And I struggle with this. And I come up with this. I talk about this a lot because when I'm talking to team members, they're too busy to learn something to, that can make them do it quicker. I'm wanting to give me an hour to show you how to sharpen your axe. Let me show you bulk checks. It's phenomenal. It's going to save you hours and hours down. And it, 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 you'll never search for a penny again. No, no, no. I'm too busy, Dominic. I'm too busy. I can't do it. I can't do it. So I. Put it on here because I'm begging. Please think about it because that's what, that's what your Fridays are for sometimes. You, that's your admin day if you guys are closed on Fridays, for example. If some of my offices actually do Mondays, you know, whatever that is. And I've got some other times for us. Okay, effective meetings prepares us for our day for work. All right, the better you are, the, the more prepared you are, the easier the tasks go. That's, that says it. All right. Some tools. Yeah, feel free to take this. I will email them to you as well. You could take as many photos of these as you want. All right, I always tell everybody, lock your door. If you're going to do a one hour, and I'm going to go into this next, you're going to do any meetings, lock your door. Put a sign on and call your patients that are due at the, at the top of the hour and tell them not to come early. Come on time, because we're going to be in a meeting. Who has seen your patients that come at 1 o'clock right after lunch, right? How early do they like to come? Yeah. Yeah, there's 10, 10, only 10? What did I hear? I heard 30 somewhere. 15? I see 30 a lot. Yeah, I, that's a learning lesson. Call them. Let them know. Come on time. You'll be fine. It's, it's hard to, they'll put them in the chair. We put them back in the car. It's, it's not, it, it, it really ruins a meeting. And it, it takes away the effectiveness of a meeting. All right, what do we have next? Ah, now this, this meeting, so I'm going to go into some meeting types. I love this meeting. This meeting, I call it the Weekly Accountability Meeting, WAM. Brian Moran wrote a phenomenal book, The 12-Week Year. He said, who's, is, did I hear a huh? Did somebody read that? 12-Week Year, Brian Moran, phenomenal book. He says, get done what you, what you would normally do in 12 months, get it done in 12 weeks. Treat 12 weeks like it's 12 years. I'm sorry, 12 months. Because <laughs> a lot of times we don't, we don't do anything until the last minute, and we start crunching like me trying to get my printouts today. Uh, no, 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 no chuckles. They, were, they weren't laughing. Hopefully at home. I say schedule a one hour meeting every week. Put the sign on the door, lock it, call your patients, and block it. It's really tough. D team, mem team members not always understand how expensive it is. I don't know how many, who's team members and who's doctors, but I think you guys I can, I can hit over here. It's very expensive to close up for an hour, especially with hygiene. Very expensive. We're sharpening an ax. Be on point, be, be on purpose, be into it. It's really, it's really tricky because 
It's expensive, but can we turn that into more profitability down the road? You absolutely can. What I say in a one hour account, a weekly accountability meeting, what went well this week, the last week? What went well? Talk about it. Enjoy your successes, celebrate your wins, okay? You deserve it. I like to celebrate. I, sometimes I'll get little lottery scratchers or $2 bills or something just to make it a little fun. A little bribery goes a long way, you know, but that being said, I, you know, I want to make it fun because we also need to talk about what could have gone better. And this is a tough one because, you know, we got to dive into the challenges. This will help you grow. But if we spend an hour every week, and I've got a few offices that actually adhere to it, and they're so tight and it's because of these one-hour meetings. They have um, been able to, and you're gonna hear patients' names, you're gonna hear situations, doctors are gonna have some things that you guys were involved in, and team members. But if we are, we're not whipping anybody, you know, we are growing and we're trying to fix some things. Where did we go wrong? Where did we make a left or a right? Wait, what did the patient say? Why? When? How? They came up to the front and said what? You know, that's very common. Oh, I didn't have them popping in. Okay, so there's some advanced meetings as well. So I'm moving on from WAM. Now these are a little advanced. Master the, the, the WAM, I've got a, you know, and morning huddles is coming up, I'm saving for in a moment. But monthly meetings, it's not one hour. That's a good time to have either two hours or more if you can do it. It's advanced, be on point, have an agenda. I like role play in these types of meetings. That's, and everybody cringes when I say role play. Got to have some fun. But I'll tell you, if you role play, and this is a big, big jump for role play. If you, tr even if you're giggling and you're shy, you turn red, oh my gosh, I don't know. What happens though is you fumble through it. And the irony is you've done it maybe once or twice. Everybody kind of did it. Okay, now you be the patient. You got to force yourselves to do it. But when you have, what happens, what you get out of it is when you're in front of a patient, you're able to actually say it because you've said it a couple of times already, hopefully a few times, and you've felt it come off your tongue. It's, it's something that's happened. Quarterly meetings, that's where you can go bigger. Do some role play too, but I think also, that, you know, review big changes. Okay, that's a good time to, to go over bigger stuff. All right, things change all the time. We never have meetings in dental. We're always busy in our business. And so this is working on our business. If you guys have a new handbook or new rules or something you want to discuss, Bonus changes, all right? Bonus is a tricky one. Not everybody does bonus, some do. Sometimes we have bonuses that have been set in place for years and years. It's time to change those and set a time limit on your bonus. I don't have a section on bonus, so I'll talk about that for a second. I'll get in camera here. Bonuses are great, but they're not an entitlement, and that's what happens. Doctors get upset because oh, they're expecting that bonus. Change it up. Now, try and make something attainable by moving this one, either lessening this and giving a new one so that it'll almost equal out or get close and giving something to strive for and give it three months and then say we, we, we reevaluate in three months. That's an idea. And then the yearly meetings. And, I, and yearly meetings, I, I, has that, does anybody know who Emtiaz Manji is? He used to have leadership. All right, who's been? Right here? Well, that was amazing. Remember he used to tell us to, uh, I've been three times. I loved it. I loved it. He would say, close Monday so that you can work on this. Did you ever close Mondays? No, no neither did we. <laughs> did you implement that binder full of stuff? I know, it's hard. It's hard, it's too much. It's drinking from the fire hose. So plan, plan. We would do yearly planning meetings because of that. And you know what we started learning? We learned the hard way, which is something that dentists do. Oh, what mistake did you make? Oh yeah, oh, okay. no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> well, don't do a yearly planning meeting in January. You're already scheduled six months out. I wanted to take Easter off. Ah. Think ahead. That's where I'm getting at. You know what I mean? Plan way ahead because that's a planning meeting. What are we going to do? What trips are we going for? What big things can we go for? I have a dentist who said, can we uh, make a bonus system where I can, we can go do one of those CE cruises? I'm like, yes. You know, only with your uh, consultant. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then we're still on tool number two. Effective morning huddles. No handout. I forgot to edit that part out. <laughs> I will email those out. But it's going to be what I'm, I'll break down. Keep it simple. That's important. The problem with, who, who has morning huddles? Oh, wow. Who has effective morning huddles? I don't know, okay. Mm -hmm. Kind of? Okay, good. Good, good, good. Oh, all right. I want some engagement on the end of this, this one. I want to hear what you guys are doing well. I rarely come across a morning huddle. It's hard for timing. It's hard to know what we're doing. It's hard to stay on point. 
it's a, there's a lot of difficulty in it. Some of us get it and they have their succinct little things that we need to get out. So here's some things. What I did is for those of us who don't have morning huddles, I, I just gave us some, a simple checklist. Here's some things. Do one, if nothing else. Who are we seeing today? Who's the hygiene checks? Who's the hygiene checks? By the way, if we see our patients once every 12 months or we do once a year for exams, but if that patient has, if a patient who's coming in who was diagnosed with something six months ago, go see him again. Talk about it in the morning huddle. You don't have to charge him for an exam if you don't want to, if it's not covered or whatever it is, but go in there. I'm, I'm gonna say a, a, a dirty four letter word, sales, selling. Selling happens in the back. It's actually called building value. That's what I call it, ABV, always build value. Because you have to build that value in the back. How come they didn't, how come they didn't schedule the crown? How many times doctors lean up at the front desk? How come they didn't schedule the crown? I don't know, doc, I don't think you made them want it enough. All right, let me see, was it because you said it could wait? All right, so if you recommended it six months ago and it could wait, well, it could wait's over in six months. If they've got a crack, they got, I have two implants, by the way. I had to race down to Danville yesterday to get crowned because I was not going to be toothless tonight. Well, I was going to be, but he stayed late for me. <laughs> I'm hard on my teeth. And I'll tell you, I wish I was, you know, hit harder. Get a night guard. Well, it's, I need a day guard too, probably. That said, that said, people need dentistry. It's okay to tell them they need dentistry. That's why I see sales, but it really isn't. You're building the value for that dentistry because they don't want it. I'm not going to get too hard. I could talk all day long on building value on dentistry because that's, that's a hard part for us to take in. But dentistry is something that people don't want. They need it. Who buys what they need? Yeah, nobody raises their hands. Never do. We buy what we want. I usually hold up my iPhone at that point or some other gadget. Well, I want that, but I don't need I don't, I don't need it, but I'll buy them, right? We find a way. Patients will tell you, how many times have they told you? Uh, you know, no, I, I can't afford it. I'm gonna think about it, whatever. But let me tell you about my last trip to Cancun last week. Oh, do you like my new car? As a matter of fact, we were having a WAM meeting in my Paso Robles office. I love it, and they're probably watching. And we were talking about this patient who was coming at one o'clock after our lunch meeting. And they were saying, no, she's never gonna buy. She's never gonna buy. And I said, I bet she pulls up in a fancy car. And I'm like, well, I mean, but she's, she's always and doesn't have the money. And I said, if she drives up in a fancy car, take that off your mind. Don't, don't give her the out. Yeah, it was, a, yeah, an SLK convertible, right? It was beautiful. I, didn't, I was trying to look to see how much it was. It was enough to know that she could get some dentistry. And she had a bunch of work to do. They got, they got past that mental block because we were talking about it. We sharpened the ax. That's what it's about. So how many times are you seeing patients that you're proposing and you're not seeing? So, all right, I'm, I'm skipping ahead. Tool two, effective morning huddles. Hey, who are we seeing today? Go over and have some hygiene checks. Be aware of where you're at and where you need to be. Who is new to the practice? This is a big one. Who's new to the practice? And I love it that you guys are writing this. Where'd they come from? You want to know that. And if, you're, if your team who's, asking, who's answering the calls doesn't know, each time you ask this in your effective morning huddles, they'll start to realize they need to uh, tell you where those patients are coming from. By the way, I also want to know, how do you pronounce their name? Daniela? Uh, how do I pronounce your name? Nereida. Nereida. Oh, did I say it right? I love that. I strive to say names correctly because people love to hear their names said correctly. I love that. And you know, everybody has their different names. Sometimes Fred might be Fred, I don't know, Fredo. All right, write this one down. Are there any financial challenges we're facing today? Why, hey, these two here, I love it. Oh no, wait, they're having a team huddle. Hold on, I'll wait, I'll wait. You too, I wanna know, no, no, no. We are celebrating our success because so far our morning huddles are due all these days. Tell me something, why is it so important that we need to discuss the financial challenges of the day? Oh, no, no, you know. You know why it has to be discussed in the morning. I'll answer for you. Because what does the back office do when that patient shows up? Before you can get off the phone with Delta or get this hygiene patient, this and that and everything else, what's happening? That financial problem, right to the back. They got a rubber dam on, a lead suit and everything else before you can get back there with the treatment plan. Wait, wait. Uh, discuss it beforehand. Have a plan. You feeling this? You getting this? All right, good, good. 
He's got that serious look in his eyes. I want to make sure I was hit it. Hey, where's our emergency times? Where's our emergency times? This is a common one, right? But he goes even deeper. Do we have time for a palliative in those times too, right? Or is it just going to be a, a simple x-ray, send out? Where, what kind of time are we looking at? No ahead. It's just one question. Can we do a palliative in that time? No? OK. Because then what happens, the assistants can then start sitting. Because that's what they do. They go, oh, yeah, yeah we got to get the cassette. And, you know, oh, no, you get the cassette. And I'll do the, OK, all right, I'll take it. Yeah, we'll do 11. 11's OK. I always say save the clinical setup stuff for the last. Usually my, my practice management team gets out because the patients are already there. And that's where the team in the back wants to know who they're going to be assisting, what setups we need. Is there something special? I say keep it brief. I have doctors who love talking clinical. Chop, chop, get them moving. We got patients to see. <laughs> I love it. Oh, is there volume? Is it going to play? OK. All right. Hopefully online. This is Jenna's debut on my YouTube channel. you're speaking with at the counter, they understand. You can take that call. They would expect you to do the same for them. Have a great day. I hope you enjoy. Oh, oh, I, got, oh I didn't realize I had music at the end of that one. That was my early career. How are we doing for team meetings? Good? Questions? Comments? You three? You guys were so into it. No? Now we're done? We're I want to hear. Yes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So here's what I do. And I love that because uh, it, it, it's tricky to get them all on the same page. Alternate your WAM meeting, first of all. Include hygiene. It's important. They are integrated with, with all that we're doing, and especially all that you're doing in your WAM, and because they're seeing patients. But also, next day that the next one's in, have a conversation with them, what you guys covered in the WAM. Make sure they felt included. That's huge, in, huge. Hygienists do feel like they're on an island. You ever hear that? Do I have any hygienists here? Ah, all right. Do you guys ever, has that ever been said? Do you guys ever, no? No, not you, but others do. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're stuck in, you're, sometimes you're excluded, sometimes you're not. When all the drama's going down, that's when I hear, no, I don't know nothing. I'm an island. <laughs> oh, you guys know. Yeah, that's the hardest part. It's hard. It's, first of all, you've got a full schedule, hopefully. All right. It's hard to plan that hole. I don't know where the hole is going to be. Oh, that's a whole, another whole day class that I'd like to cover. How not to have those. Include your hygienist, but swap it up. But make sure that the next day when they're in, that they're part of the celebration for sure. See if they've had any hiccups. If there's something that they want to include bef the day before. They won't be there. Oh, you know, Aunt, what was your name? Jill. Jill, uh, and at today's WAM meeting, Jill couldn't, Jill's in her other practice today, so Jill wanted us to talk about how we handled uh, you know, patient Bobby and, you know, that whole thing. And that, that's a good thing. And you guys will have already had a conversation, which is good, all right? Feels included, and you're growing. You're sharpening your ax. Does that help? Good. It's, it's there. It's better than the whole excluding. <laughs> um, any other questions or comments or anything? Okay, good. Did you like my video? Jenna and I had a lot of fun making that one. And that's, our, that's an assistant in the back playing patient, patient number one. All right. Nope, 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 nope. It's going to play again. By the way, when you're watching YouTube, okay, it's just going to keep playing. Okay, I'll figure this. Uh, oh, yeah. All right. All right. We ready for tool number three? I didn't give a heading to this one. Oh, yes, I know why. The most important instrument in your practice. Now, for those of you, I don't, rec I don't think anybody's been in any of my seminars. I usually do them in the Bay Area. What is the most important tool in your practice? Doc, what do you got? KPIs, your key performance indicators. I like that. Wow, we got, we got a business doc in here. That's not it, but I like that. What else? Yes. Oh, you're good on the second shot. Exactly. It's, it's the, 
Come on, buttons. Oh, I spent way too much time getting there. I didn't, sometimes I hit the button too fast and the phone comes up. Yes, the phone. Not feeling that? Too many clinicians in here. <laughs> All right. It is. It's the phone. I'm going to talk about the phone, but it includes you guys. All right? Some of the things I want to talk about real quick about the phones, because I, clinical should be able to take a call. It doesn't mean you have to walk them through insurance or anything else. But tool number three, most important instrument in your practice. Phone, I'm going to talk real quick about phone quality. This is very, very important. How often do you see your team on the phone doing this, doing this number, and they're digging, and they can't get that ear, the phone in their ear deep enough because they can't hear? Yeah, I'm getting a lot of nods. And the reason why, cruddy phones, basically. Probably a condenser mic or uh, uh, the type of microphone in a lot of our phones, those Panasonic KXT 2615s. I just made that last number up, but it's something like that. They're terrible. They pick up all the noise. And are we quiet at the, de at the desk? Oh, are we quiet at we're at the front, even when we're dropping off a patient, we're greeting somebody, and somebody's on the phone. Oh, hi, Kelly, I'll be right there. That's my high voice. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> the problem is it's, echo it's shooting through and we can't hear. Be aware when shopping for phones. And if you've got that, ask your team when you get back, do you have that problem? Fix it. Fix it fast. If you believe the phone is the most important instrument in your practice. I would invest in a good one. I personally, I usually recommend to doctors that they get Comcast phones. Uh, I have a relationship with Comcast. I call them, hey, can you come in and do a demo at this practice? They go all over the Bay Area. They get it all in one fell swoop. You can do all the other ones. That's fine. I don't beat up any of them. The challenge is I want it done. I want it done in one swoop, and I don't want, it, I don't want the doctor doing it. I have a doctor who spent six months putting his phones in. And for that six months, he was dialing out with a, San, uh, he was in the East Bay, but he's dialing out with a Southern California phone number. Well, it's just how, because of the thing, and it wouldn't cross over. It's like, to save 100 bucks a month on the most important instrument in their practice. So quality matters. Also, I recommend, oh, let me see if it's in here. It's difficult to, oh, yeah, yeah, callers with a bad name. Are you wearing a headset? Those who have phones, do you guys have headsets? I always hear that. We tried them, but had, what happened? Do or do not, there is no try, as Yoda says. Yeah, thank you. Good job. Why? Ours don't work. Fix it. You wear yours out. I love that. All right, headsets back there? No? Why not? We want one, though, don't we? Oh, look at the lip. Aw, yes, get her a headset. I'll tell you what, those Plantronics, you can get the ones that lift the thing and do all that. It is a few hundred bucks. Headsets.com. I don't make anything off of those, but call them. Don't a quick question from the internet. Oh, I uh, love it. What's the best uh, phone system you know of? So, I, like I said, Comcast is my favorite system. Okay, it's a voice over IP. Um, it's Business Voice Edge is the one that I use or I recommend. It is like having the uh, closet systems that uh, uh, mo some of us will remember, those systems where there was a computer in the closet, cost you 12 grand, and you had to have special people who knew how to program it. Uh, they have that all in the cloud. It's in Walnut Creek and in Denver and some other places. And you call the help desk. Hi, can you make line two ring more than line one? I'm sick of taking all the calls. And, okay, yes, ma'am, I'll take care of that. It's amazing. You get um, uh, planned. Um, <laughs> what kind of phones are those? <laughs> They're uh, Vodafone. I think it's Vodafone. Does that sound right? Yeah, I think it's. No, what's the. What's the Polycom. Polycom. Thank you. I love Polycom phones because they've got great voice. Tremendous. You don't hear the rest of the room. So I don't know how to plug. So you have to find out. Do your homework on this. Polycoms are my absolute favorite phones. Now the, the 5000 series or 500 series, there's a USB in the, you know what, where's my headset? Also write down. I also like the Plantronics Voyager 5200 for a headset. Who said they tried them but didn't work? I love this headset. And it connects to the Polycom 500s or 5 Series. It's just Plantronics Voyager 5200. It's this headset. Boom. I love this. Boop. Boop. Hello. I mean, thanks for calling. And one more time for the internet, so I want to repeat. So I typically, when I'm talking about a system, I'm repeating. Uh, when I'm talking about systems, I call Comcast. It's, it gets done in one swoop. 
they come in, and I like Business Voice Edge, BVE, Business Voice Edge, because it's just done, it's high quality, it is a couple hundred bucks a month. You get, you get at least, it comes, you get like five stations, uh, and every phone that goes out, and this is gonna be talked about in a second, every call out is from the same phone number. It's not like their lines divvied up and you can transfer over. It's like having a high-end system. You don't have to use the phone tree. As a matter of fact, I don't like phone trees. Uh, for uh, you know, accounting, press one, and for scheduling, press two, and too often do I have doctors, press three. <laughs> I always bypass counting and go to Dr. Doc, I got charged. Anyway, biz, Comcast BVE, Business Voice Edge, get the, get the uh, Polycom phones, get the ones that you can get the little USB Bluetooth, because this comes a little case and a little Bluetooth adapter, just like our keyboards. And I'll tell you what, you talk about trying headsets, I love this, because it's just lightweight, it's easy, boop, answer, people go home. Sometimes they'll be driving out of the parking lot and they'll tell me, they go, it'll say, disconnected from phone. It's like, ah! Anyway, this is my fourth one. They, they're great. They don't go through the washing machine very well. At least the first three don't, but I'm sure this one will make it. All right, where was I? Back on track. Yeah, so phone quality, headsets. Let's see, I asked you, are you yeah, why not? Okay. okay. And like I just said, what phone number is showing when you dial out? Are you calling out from line two? Does it show line two? Oh, oh boy, we got some giggles going on over here. Fix that. Fix that too. That's a phone call. Fix it. I'll tell you why. Who ignores a phone number? They, who, who, do we all get robocalls or is it just me? Yeah, right? So if a patient sees a 707-823-3000, or whatever, I made up, you know, not your standard number, they're not going to answer it. And then they're going to listen later. Oh, it's confirmed. They'll hear, they'll realize, oh, it's my doctor. And do they listen to the voicemails? No. No, they don't. And then they show up. No, I told you don't show up. Oh, I got your voicemail. Did you listen to it? So have it go out as one phone number. So everywhere you pick up a phone, it's the same number dialing out. That's important. That's part of, of getting it right. You guys good over here? You like, are you getting any of these? Is this good stuff, kind of? All right. Arms are crossed. I'm reading the body language. I want to make sure I got to get something good for you. I think there's going to be coming up. All right, tool number three. The most, oh, no. I forgot to edit this. It's still, oh wait, we're still on number three. Oh, never mind. No, I didn't forget. We're good. Scratch that part out. Everyone in your, now we're going to talk about using your phones. All of us should be, just like we should all have a vision for our lives, right? Even Jill. <laughs> yes. I saw her tap you. Everyone should know how to answer your phones. Doctors, did any of you answer your phones? No. Oh, wow. If you had to, would you? No? Oh, good, good, good. I don't like a phone not answered, by the way. Everybody should know how. But I'm going to give you some. Yeah, they, they do. I love answering phone calls at 7 o'clock at night. I shouldn't be admitting how often I'm in a practice, even today, even these days, at 7 o'clock at night. But I love answering those. Hi, thanks for calling. Yeah, your appointment tomorrow? Sure, we look forward to seeing you. What's that? Is there any way you can make that appointment? I, er, um, er. So I'm gonna give you some. I'm gonna give you some nuggets. I could teach phone etiquette and how to master phone calls in an all-day class, but I'm gonna give you guys, all of us, the ability to do what we need to do. Be pleasant. <laughs> Doctor's office. I, I do love the idea. Of, I don't know who it was. I, not all of these ideas are mine naturally. Some so blended. Have a mirror. If, we, if you got a sourpuss at the front, get him a mirror. <clears throat> get him off the phones. <laughs> I smile. Let me back up. I smile on the phones. I smile every single time. It is essential. It is awesome sauce. Do we still use that, D'Artagnan? Do they still say awesome sauce? It's 2019. I do. I do. Remember to smile. Oh, see, I was ahead of my game. They can hear you smiling through the phone. Everybody. And make it fun. Yes? We're over there. We're smiling. What? What? Yes, I'm still smiling. I can't hear you, though. Yeah, they're all shouting. Am I shouting too? Okay. They can hear you smiling through the phone. Do people love going to the dentist? Yes. Yeah, no they don't. So they tell us all the time, right? So be sweet, be pleasant, smile. Help them out. Hi, can I speak with Jill? <laughs> Did I miss anything good? Yeah, I, I, you know, and there's some no-brainers. And let, let me tell you, 
this is for you guys and for anybody else too. When answering the phones, when answering the phones, everybody must be pleasant. If somebody's being a sourpuss, work on it. It's a great leadership course I talk about. Leading, set those expectations, but even as a team, encourage each other. Hey, where are you, you know, I, <laughs> there's so many ways to do it. Usually sourpusses don't like it being pointed out. I get it, I get it. Find a way, because they're hurting the practice. They're hurting the business, they're hurting the bonus. I wanna go to Mexico on the cruise. It's a four day cruise and leave San Francisco. I can't wait. All right, where are we going? Tool number three still is, oh, my secret sauce. I better read ahead. What is my secret sauce? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, here's how to answer the phone. Jot these three points down, because you're gonna give it to everybody. Thank them for calling. It's simple, thank you for calling. People like that, it's pleasant. Doctor's office, how can I help you? Now it's closed, but no, 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 no. Thank them for calling. Let them know who, this one right here, should, I should have put a star next to this one. Hi, who am I speaking with? Who, yeah, that's what I have to say when they answer. When I'm calling an office I work with, and I can't tell who it is. Who is this? Oh, it's Betty. Oh, hey, Betty. Uh, da, da, da. That's the, they'll answer that way every single time. Tell the caller who you are. Unless you're a doctor and you're not wanting to let them know that you're a doctor, you can tell, you can, then you can bypass. That being said, usually when a male is answering, it's, it's because it's, uh, you know why. Okay, I better not say. An offer to be of service, friendly service. How can I help you? How may I help you? What other ways? Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. What's up? What can I do for you? Well, and you know, if, we're hearing the, the, if you're hearing those things, we've got to nip that in the bud, I'll tell you. Even sounding rushed, it could be frenetic. MTIs used to always talk about the duck going across the, the, the pond. Looks like it's gliding, be kicking like hell underneath, right? Don't sound frenetic, don't sound crazy. Don't, Hi, doctor's office, how can I help you? I usually, when I hear that, if I'm calling a practice I'm, I, that I work with, oh, I know you're with, are you with somebody? No. Why are you talking at 100 miles an hour? Why are you making me feel rushed? I have anxiety now. <laughs> Knock it off. Don't be rushed. Even if there's a patient standing in front of you. Now I want to talk about that video we watched. Is that, did the video give it away? Is that how you knew my, uh, my secret? To, all right, you're just good. Okay, good, I like it. The reason why we did that video is I've watched front office people pick up. Thanks for calling, can you please hold? And they've said, must not be that important. And I'm looking, why didn't you take the call? Well, I gotta go put this chart away. I, I've heard that. Now, you guys aren't acting as astonished as I am, but that's astonishing. Take the call. That's our jobs. That phone is everything to our business. So take the call. Take the call, and when somebody's standing in front of you, and you're answering them, and they're standing there, they're waiting for you to answer that call. Bring, and you're ignoring it. Uh-huh, keep going. You know, they, they, this sweat's going down. They're like, uh, aren't you going to take it? No, it's fine. Patients who are standing there know that that person doesn't know you're talking with somebody, so they're expecting you to take the call. And in under 30 seconds, you'll have that person either on hold or you'll be able to call them back, and you'll know what they want. Let me show you that, too. That's secret sauce number two, I think. Okay. Oh yeah, here comes secret sauce number two. Take control of your calls from the beginning. And even when you got somebody standing in front of you, this works great. The, the way to take control of calls, let's see what order I put these in. I can help you. Who am I speaking with? Question mark. Who am I speaking with? You've asked the first question. Because you're gonna say, hi, thank you for calling, how may I help you? Yeah, do you take my insurance? Jill, what would you say? Frozen. I can help you. Who am I speaking with? The reason why I'm doing that is I'm taking control. You start. <laughs> what would Michelle do? WW. She would answer the question. Yes, so can you. I can help you. Who am I speaking with? Who am I speaking with? That's your first question. I bet Jill, if we were to talk for a little bit, we started hanging out. Glass of wine, usually we start relaxing. We can do the role play. It's a lot easier. And you would be able to come up with a dozen things you can ask. You're, you've been in dental long enough to know. Sure. Right? Do you. Do you take my insurance? We take a lot of insurance. Who am I speaking with? Yeah, I can help you. Who am I speaking with? First question, because you're going to start asking more questions. Now, again, this is, this is an all-day class, but I'm giving you the secret sauce. Ask questions. You guys know the questions. Let me see if i got any more in here. 
Oh, I can help you. Who am I speaking with? Oh, this is Loretta. Loretta, I'll be right with you. I've got one caller ahead of you. Do you mind if I place you on a brief hold? Or can I call you back within about 15 minutes? Notice I said 15 minutes and not a few minutes. Under promise. Under promise. Never say, I'll call you, I'll call you soon when you know lunch is in 20 minutes. Can I call you right after our lunch or before the end of the day? All right. A lot of secret sauce in this one, right? But taking control of your call by asking questions is the key. And we all know, Jill knows questions to ask. If I started grilling her and started working on it, she would know what to say. Now, insurance questions are tricky, but we don't need to answer. The caller doesn't know what to ask, especially a new patient who's saying, do you take my insurance? We take a lot of insurance. Who, who, who am I speaking with? Remember, remember this part too, right? Who am I speaking with? That's not why they're choosing your office. They just don't know what to ask. Questions place you in control of the call. I can help you. Who am I speaking with? Jill, how'd you find us? What are you looking for? Well, I'm actually looking for a place close to my house. Oh, not a place that's contracted with your dumb insurance? Oh, I said that online. <laughs> New patients don't know what to ask. They don't. Uh, how much is a cleaning? Oh, I can help you with that. Who am I speaking with? You see how that just happens? You, all of you can do this. I can help you. Yeah, who am I speaking with? Yeah, oh, uh, my name's Betty. I'm just curious, how much is a cleaning? Well, you know, I don't know the exact number, but I can get it for you. More questions. Don't stop there. What, do you, are you seeing a dentist? How long has it been since your last cleaning? Great question. Taking control. See where I'm going with that? Get them talking. Oh, people love to go places. They want to go to places where they uh, feel like they belong. I'll start singing cheers. No? Everybody knows your name? No? Okay, all right. Pushing it. All right. The goal is to get, get the conversation going. Tell me more about that. Oh, you got insurance. Is insurance the, is there an insurance issue? Are you having an insurance? Tell me more about that. Basically, I put it in there. I, I'm looking to find out more about that caller. Tell me more about what you got going on. So each question is geared toward tell me more, tell me more. Okay. Oh, I should have, I should have like breaks between. Any questions regarding calls, phones? Hardware, software, yes, you, stranger in the back. Jenna and I have a, <clears throat> a slight disagreement on this one, uh, but it's okay, it's good. I think it's okay. It's better than no phone. I've, I've grown a practice with a cordless phone. Make sure it has a little mini jack on the side. It's the two millimeter, not the three millimeter like our phones, our cell phones have, and get the headset. Get a headset for it. It's still not the best, but at least you can answer. I can't tell you, and I'm terrible at assisting, but I've tried it many, many, many times, and I would be wearing my headset, and I'm, you can't imagine me sitting still. I can't even stand still, but I'm trying. Bring, oh, good. Thank you for calling. Doctor's office, this is Dominic. Oh, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Right, oh, yeah, I can help you and all that. Uh, Dominic, yeah, it's like, oh, sorry. Yeah, don't have me assist. I'm a pro at the phones, though. So cordless phones are okay. Go better than that. Phones are essential. Uh, a lot of the practices that I have, the Comcast BVE coming in, we, they have Panasonic, phenomenal Panasonic uh, uh, phones that go with those systems. So I, I'm, I'm okay with cordless. Again, I'm looking for my, you know, make it easy. It's, it's, it's this. It's the voice quality. Yes. If it, don't fix what's not broken, but if you're doing this, uh-huh, uh-huh, I can't, what? Then it's broken. So, but if it isn't broken, you don't have to fix it. I'm thinking in terms more of, the, of maybe the, uh, the, you know, the, the headphones, I would say. If it's crackling, if the cords are broken, call, he this is why I, I have used headsets.com for years, because they got a help desk, they, you call, oh, it sounds like you got a, a J21 cable problem, I made that up. But they'll, you know, yeah, we'll get that right out, 18 bucks, it's like, oh. I thought it was going to be 350 bucks. Hey, doc, good news, <laughs> right? So that's my trick is get it fixed. But if you have to, get a new headset, if that's the key. Headsets, everything. By the way, also get the little uh, cushion that holds, your, you know, holds it for the neck. For those of you that, for, in case Jill has to come over and answer the phone, she can hold it in at least, right? Headsets are a key because you're going to be able to, you're going to be able to type as you're talking, which is important. Yeah, where'd you find us? Right? What can I do for you? What are you looking for? Because when we're in that effective morning huddle, 
Who's our new patients? How do we pronounce our name? What do they want? Go back to that note, by the way, where I, I forgot to add that part. I just remembered it. What do they want? What do they want? If you've got a new patient coming in, do patients buy what they need or do they buy what they want? Huh? Ask me. You got another question? What do you want? <laughs> well, we want to know what they want. Yes. You want to know. <laughs> no, no, exactly, exactly. But no, if a patient's calling, you want to know what they're wanting. Teams that are asking, they're um, taking these calls, please make a note. It helps to have a headset. You're not getting this, crick in the neck, and so you could type it in the notes. How many new patients do you, hey, how many new patients did you guys have today? Three. Uh, were there notes in the system or charts or whatever before they came in? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, all right. Oh. Are those? Are those? <laughs> well done. I love it. I do have? Are the notes already entered? All right. What do they want? Yes, I do. Not their names. Patient one wants. Ooh, motivated buyer. I love those. And. Ooh, yeah, that's good. Okay, thank you. This is a pedo, pediatric no, practice. Oh, okay. Today it was. Was school closed today? Getting on point. Okay, we got it. I love it. You know what they want. You see, that's what's important. Great. Maybe we might do a couple of fillings. It's a kid. Let's knock it out. Okay. That which is measured improves. I put dot 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 because it also is that which is measured and reported improves exponentially. But let's just start with this. This is dentistry. So to me, let's get the basics. What are you measuring? What are you tracking? What are you, what are you putting down? What do you know? So I love this section. This is never really my doctor's favorite section. So this is, this is my, one of my practices. He, he uses paper. I'm okay with paper. It is 2019, but that's okay. That's okay. He gets a business card out and he lines up the dots and he puts it all over. Okay, let's see. This is New Patients Weekly. Let's see what that number is right here. 21 new patients that week. Looks like Christmas week. Not too many new patients Christmas week, but you can see. Production. Yeah, what is it? 64K that week. Okay, good. Not bad. He's tracking it. He wants to know where we're going. That pink line is his heartbeat. That's what he likes. He wants to go above that. Track what you want to improve. Let's go into it. I'm not showing off. He's actually had better numbers than that. <laughs> All right. Oh, I like this. <laughs> Do you work by feelings or by facts? And, I, and all doctors always say, oh, by facts. And I go, how much did you, uh, how'd you do last month? I feel like I did pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it felt, felt good, huh? Yeah, well, you know, I was able to pay payroll. I got a little bit for myself. It was OK. Yeah, that's the feeling. We're, that's, that's, if that's your heartbeat, if that's how you're checking the pulse of your practice, you know, uh, Hang tight, we got some more stuff. Uh, I do have an appointment. Mm, okay. How'd you do last month? That's where I was, I went into my joke. I felt like it was good last month. All right, do you know your numbers? You know, I usually, now when I get a phone, I renamed my business several times since I've been doing this for the last nine years. And I, I've ended up on dental practice rescue because, I, well, I like bar rescue. It felt like that's, that made sense going in and, Shaking them up. Come on, you got to run this business like a business. And uh, I don't talk like that sometimes. Uh, but I'll ask because when they call me, can you help me with my business? Uh, what you got going on? I start asking my questions. Well, sure. What, uh, well, I don't know. I don't know where my money is. I, I don't know what's going on. I got you know, my team and I got this, I got that. There's always stuff. So I ask, what's your monthly production? Well, you got an idea. What's your monthly collections? More important number, guys. I think doctors know that more than anybody. All right, how many new patients did you have last month? Uh, I think, uh, okay, not enough then, or we don't know. Okay, so then I start asking tougher questions, and it's not that tough. The reason why I'm making this into a, a slide, and this is why this is one of the tools, is because we all should be paying attention to specific numbers. What you track, you improve. So you have to track it. That's the key. You can put it on a, on a graph piece of paper. You can do whatever. Put it somewhere. Pay attention to it. But it's more than just your collections and your production. And that's monthly. Uh, as you saw that, that piece of paper uh, that was up on that wall, and there were several graphs. I just took a couple. But he's doing it weekly. 
he's paying attention to his numbers weekly. That was my $3 million practice that he says he, he, likes, to, he likes to look at the numbers. He's got a lot of those. All right, so let's get a little deeper, shall we? What's your BAM? Does everybody know what their BAM is? Does anybody know what BAM is? <laughs> uh, it's the bare fill-in-the-blank uh, minimum that you need to make each month. Okay. This is an important number. So I'm going to tell you, here's a tool on how to figure out your BAM. It's, uh, it involves your accountant and your P&L sheets, but really, this is my trick. This is what I do. I will go with my doctors and sit down for an accountant meeting during a long lunch, and I'll say, go. And we start scrolling through, and we recategorize everything correctly. I've had accountants that said, oh, we got to get rid of this thing. And I'm looking, going, what, is, what is that? Whoa, we have 15 grand. What was that expense? Oh, that care credit, that's got to go. OK, you're not from dental. <laughs> you're, we're moving. Uh, but we start categorizing. No, those are CERC blocks. Those go into the lab costs. Let's do this. We start moving, and all of a sudden our percentages start looking a little better, and we start understanding. But another thing is my doctors start getting a finger on the pulse. They know their cost. It's really important because what's your bare minimum? I've got many doctors of all ages who do not know what the minimum amount they need every month to make it. you got an idea, but there is a number, and it's important. But we're going to go deeper into tracking, and I will ship you all of these slides, all my stuff, whatever you want. You, my cell phone was at the beginning. It'll be at the end. You're welcome to call me. I'd love to have, I love talking about this stuff. I don't know if you can tell. I'm very shy, but tonight I'm coming out of my shell. <laughs> you falling for this? Okay. How many patients do you see each year? That's a big number. That's a thing to know. How many patients are you seeing each year? That's important. What are you doing? Because are they staying? Are they because these numbers, see, when you track numbers, when you're tracking what you do, you can improve those things. So you want to pay attention to when, you know, how many patients am I seeing? Well, wait a second. How many new patients did I have? Hang on a second. Why is the number going down? As Howard Franz says, the back door is bigger than the front door. It's, it's, it, you know, it puts a finger on the pulse of what's going on. By the way, I read a lot of Yelp reviews before tonight. I kind of have, a, I have a little sense of a lot of the practices that are here tonight as well, just from what everybody's saying. When there's a theme, I can kind of get an idea of what's going on. Not bad. Actually, it was actually really good. Um, how many days of hygiene do you have each year? Days of hygiene is important. Jill? How many days, huh? Lots? Not enough? <laughs> Don't count. She's calculating. No, 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 no. It's late. Don't worry about it. All right. But how about the amount of holes in your hygiene schedule? And I like to go for the average. Take it even no. No? No holes in you guys? If I get a hole, it's not going to last very long. Nice. Who, who's, who does that? Look at you, throwing pens and everything. Who gets that filled? She does. Really? Like that. So nice. Michelle, how long do you spend a day filling holes in hygiene? <laughs> I'd be tracking that, too. Sounds like you guys said. I could fill a hole like that. All right. Okay. One phone call. Done. Wow. Sounds like you guys need another day of hygiene. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. All right. We'll go to there later. Just need one more, maybe. All right. All right. What's your hourly? <laughs> yeah. I think Michelle could fill another day. Sunday? Sure. Uh, what's your hourly production? Now, that might not always seem like that's an important number, but what happens is we start to pay attention to our average number of what we're doing, and it's very helpful for your teams to know when you have a day that's all sand and water. I don't know if you guys know rock, sand, water. But you're feeling, it's all cementations and uh, deliveries and a buckle five slipped in there. Hey, we got some production. A buckle five slipped in. <laughs> uh, you want to be able to know, are we making what we need to do throughout our day? Okay. Now, if a train leaves the Chicago Midwinter Meeting traveling at 50 miles an hour, right? For, ready for this? Some math problems. All right. Now it's, they actually leave much faster than that leaving Chicago Midwinter. It's so cold. Okay. Jill, how many patients do you need to fill a full day of hygiene? How many patients technically do you need to fill a full day? Does anybody else know? 60? I like that. 16. I mean, per, I, mean, I mean, like to fill a Monday for the year. We're going to add a day of hygiene for the year. How many? Does anybody know? Oh, right on. OK. We're going to do some math. 8 times 4 times, right? OK, let's do this. Let's do this. OK, eight patients a day times 25 days. All right, I'm assuming Jill wants two weeks off. 
somewhere at some point. So you're gonna see eight patients a day. So we're gonna add, we're filling Monday. We're gonna do eight patients for that day. And it's gonna be 25 days, 25 weeks of Mondays. Can't be sick, okay? That's 200. So you need 200 patients to fill a day of hygiene. But wait a second, what if there's some perio? So let's say, I'm, I'm being really low here, 15% goes towards perio, okay? So that's, that's, now you only need 170 to fill. And that's SRP and PMTs. So you need 170 to fill one chair, Monday, so that we can get a compadre for Jill to work with. All right, but what if you got a hole? Not in your case, but somebody else's, all right? That's another 25 days of one hole a day. 145 patients. Let's just round up. Let's call it 150 patients. When you, so when you're looking at who's your, what's your active patient count, if you have you know, 600, you better have four days of hygiene. See how tracking and figuring out your numbers, where it applies? I love this, I love this math. Let's do some more math. Okay, now if a train leaves Florida, no, they don't, they never leave Florida. Okay, uh, how many days do you work each year? Do you guys know that? Does anybody know that number? Oh, you do. Yes. How many days? 166 to 168. Nice. Wait, what? Leap year? Why? One, well, okay. Good. I love it. All right. 15 days a month, roughly. Oh, okay. We'll figure it out. Okay. Nice. Nice. Okay. Good. Good. I like that. 168 to 166 to 168. Okay. Anybody else know that number? Oh, they're calculating. I love it. What do you think? Daniela won. Huh? What do you think? No, you no guess? Okay, let's do some math. All right, typically we work a four-day week. Uh, who does five? Wow, all right, cranking over there. Good. Okay, this, this applies to the other people. <laughs> you guys are workaholics. I love it. Work it. Okay, typically four days a week. That averages to 16 days a month. Oh, Doc, we had a fantastic month last month. Can we go to, can we go to Mexico? This is my going to Mexico dance. There's, I don't, it's one of those. Doesn't matter. I'm not going to Mexico. You know why? We had 21 days last month. No, we're not going to Mexico because this month's going to be 14 days. You see, that's why we'd look at averages. But 16 days a month is about the average that we do, which is 192-ish, give or take, leap year, right? A couple things like that. So I call it, so we can round it up to 200. But you see, knowing the days you're working, knowing how much you're trying to produce in a day, we're going there. Hold on. Let's go there. How much do you, how much, this is good. I love this. How much do you need to produce each month to, to make $1.2 million a year? You shout it. We're going to, we're not going that fast. Producing, it's 100% collectible. It's doing well. We'll call it production today. How much do you need to produce to make $1.2 million? Oh, 100. Yes. I know. It's, not, it's a trick question because it's not a trick question. I know. I got you. I'll, I'll kick it up a notch. All right, it's 100 a month. How much do you need to do each month? This is for like a single doctor practice. This is to do 1 million. 80 what? 80 something thousand? 88,000. It's close. It's close. Okay. 83333.33. That's it. And a, and a chicken and a goat. Okay. 83,000 a month. It's key to know this because if you're trying to get your doctor to a million, if you guys, you, if your vision is to be a million dollar practice, you got to set your goals to match that vision. So we have to line it up because we're going to figure out how much we need to do it in a day. All right. So to reach 83.3 in a 16 day month, okay, that's $5,208 per day. Good news. Jill works very hard. Okay, so we're doing about 1,200 bucks uh, in hygiene. That's very good. Good job, Jill. All right, that's eight profies at about 100. Okay, four exams and x-rays for another 100. So it puts us an average of 1,200. I usually set some bonuses for 1,250. And I do it like everybody gets five bucks for 1,250. So it kind of gets everybody motivated, filling those holes. Michelle, you're on it, right? But not only that, we're also, but I also kick up another, the next bonus, everybody gets 10 bucks when we hit 1,550. So we start paying, that's especially when we start paying attention to uh, SRPs. Uh, if, it's, if we're not, and I'm, I'm, I'm not telling anybody to diagnose uh, inappropriately, I'm all about ethics and morals. But if we're letting hide, if, if we're becoming a profi palace, per se, um, there might be a lot of opportunities. Yes. Quick My pleasure. Um, when you were talking about your patient average for the week, do you add doctors between them? 
No. No. But no. 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 They, so she asked yeah. if, uh, if I'm including the exams. I wrote exams because the exams and x-rays go together. It's right. probably 80 bucks for the, uh, for the uh, bite wings. Who does bite wings and PAs on their recall? Courtney, all right. Jill? Implants gets anteriors. So when do we get the anterior picture? Yeah. Root canal. Okay. I like that. So we got root canal. We got. Uh, we get FMXs. Okay. When? How often? Are, what's your standard of care for FMXs? Three to five, Three to five years. Whatever insurance tells you. That's another full day class. Insurance dependence 101. Okay. But that's right. It's, it's standard of care. You know what I love? By the way, I'm gonna sidetrack for a moment. What I love now is what we have is all the caries detection. And what I'm starting to integrate, because the I don't knows are huge. When I hear I don't know, what's your standard of care? I don't know, 12, we, every year we do bite wings. Why? Because uh, we're supposed to or whatever. No. You know, why are we doing it? So I love caries detection because there are some patients, and I, I have a holistic practice in the East Bay who is booked out three months. New patient waits three months to get in and pays $150 to deposit to hold that spot. I love that practice. By the way, I'm, we're taking a break. He had to put me on a shelf for a minute. He said, Dominic, you're right. I'm too busy working in my practice, and I have no time to work on my practice. So I couldn't blame him. I love that practice. I love the whole concept. Patients flock from all over the Bay Area for it. And people are glad to put money down to hold that spot. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Exams. <laughs> exams and x-rays. But no, but there's going to be, so I rounded up to 100, especially if there's going to be some PAs. Caries detection, the reason why I brought it up is that those that, if a patient says, I don't want bite wings, I don't want x-rays, you know what we do is, um, let's do caries test. Are you high risk? Oh, we're going to need them every 12 months at the most, you know, at the least. You know, low risk, excellent. Let's go 18 months or 20, but that's the standard of care doctor has set, boom. Now, everybody knows what channel we fit in. There's no question, no getting up and interrupting. Um, doctor, the patient doesn't want to take x-rays. Ah! Okay, so when we take out that 1200 bucks from hygiene, now doctor only needs to make $4,008 to have that million dollar practice. Is that three crowns, some buckle fives, and an MOD? All right. Okay, a non-hygiene day. Those are the days you want to focus on. If you have a non-hygiene team that's, that's building, and the doctors, you guys are, were pointing it out, give me another crown on that day because you're not being interrupted. There's less interruptions. You can focus on those days. Those are just ideas. This is just teaching you. Okay. Okay, let's take a moment. Can we take a break? I, there's coffee brewed, stretch. No? Nobody's getting up? Feel free. Straight. Yes. Yes. Get up. Get up. Stretch those legs. We're going to take a quick break. Five minutes. Five minutes. Thank you. All right. We're going we're gonna to turn off the mics for just a minute.
and a glass of wine. Did I hear a glass of wine? Oh, I know. When's that happen? By the way, my $3 million office, he did tell me, oh, one bit of advice, finish early. I'm trying. Okay, I'll try. Okay, welcome back. How was break? Okay, what are we on? Tool four. Yes, you're welcome. It sounded lively. I love that. This is what I love about dental meetings. Okay, track four. Nope, we're still on it. Oh, we did all these. Hold on. Oh, oh, oh there was my some awesome sauce. By the way, oh, oh, oh I'm skipping, I'm skipping. Hold on. Da, 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 da. Okay, we're on track. Okay. So, back to the last chapter of tracking. I thought I was done. We thought we were done with tracking. You know, right? Hang in there. I, if I dance more, will you stay awake? Did you guys get coffee? Okay. How much do you need to propose in order to do a hundred, a million dollars a year in production? Well, 5208, we talked about that earlier. You've got to propose 5208 if you've got a hundred percent acceptance rate or 10,416 if you have 50% acceptance rates. Who's tracking their proposed? Yeah, okay, crickets. Okay, <coughs> you'll be getting an email with a treatment tracker, which I love. A proposed treatment tracker is one of my favorite, uh, it was one of my favorite forms because you can write on it, you don't have to type it, you don't have to be fancy, keep it loose, but you know what? Every time somebody comes up, okay, patient needs a crown, that's easy, 1200 bucks, patient A, and so we're gonna go into that. You ready for my secret sauce? How to produce more. Who saw it when I flipped ahead? Does anybody know? No? Do more exams. Yeah. Do more exams. That's the, that's the, that's the secret sauce. You know, nobody's excited about that. That's it? Yeah. Do more exams. Who foregoes exams because they're busy in a hard prep or something? No, we don't allow, Courtney doesn't allow that. No. Get in there. Good. Okay. So in your email, I'll send you my form. It's very simple, but you can do it yourself, okay? It's, it's columns, it's simple. Patient name, amount proposed. Just round it, it does, it's not rocket surgery, just 1,200 bucks, 1,500 bucks, okay? Did they schedule, yes or no? If it's a yes, put the date. If it's a no, you know, I usually leave it blank and I, because the next column, why? Why did they not schedule? If you're tracking, you start seeing this, it starts to make sense, we start to see our patterns. I can tell you, Doctor said they could wait. I need to talk to my significant other. I need to think about it. I'll wait till next year when my benefits renew. Okay? Those are all common. Sounds like they don't want it. Okay? And that's the key. Now, we all, it, I, I don't, I'm not pressuring you guys to sell, but when you start paying attention to it, you start catching it. Especially that first one. Doctor said I can wait. The team members are usually really honest when they write that one in there because that's a good one. The others, there's some ways to work around those. You know, if, you're, if we're chasing or if you're busy. If you're busy, you're not chasing. It's like, fine, it can wait, right? But we don't like doing that. Patient needs work, get, it, get them in. All right. And then the last column was an intra, intra, what that says. Thank you. Intraoral photo. Was an intraoral photo taken? That's the last column, little spot, because that's really indicative. It's really funny how that square is blank and, and there's an excuse why the patient didn't do it. So that's a big one for me. Take a photo. Patients don't know what they're looking at. Okay, tip number five, tool number five. Let's get the hard hat. We're ready. We're doing tools tonight, so we had. Okay, a photo is worth $1,000, right? I made that one up. Oh, a thousand words. You're right. Oh, I, I must have missed it. I missed typo. Okay, X-rays, CBT, CBCT, Comey. That's that's great. Um, I have an amazing practice. My favorite practice I work with is my endodontist, and in the East Bay, I love the practice. We have grown so much. I've worked with him for two years, and we built an amazing team. He's been doing. He had a standard of care. He wanted to take comb beams for any time that there was a possible uh, MB2. There was possible fractures. What I love is I love morals and ethics with my doctors. And if I'm working with somebody and every tooth is a root canal, I struggle because it's, well, you know, because I've got a lot of doctors. I've, I actually work with three endodontists different, in different places. 
Um, and those that use the cone beam, they, they're, they're wanting to really diagnose what's going on and they're, and they're catching fractures. And it's money, it's, it's amazing because my, uh, my doctor who is using his cone beam, we just had to, the problem was he was just doing it for free because he just needed, he wanted to know. And it's like, oh, let's make it 95 bucks. And it was a good compromise. He felt good about it. Everybody felt good. Nobody was worried like, oh, we're overcharging the patients. And patients did it. And we're doing three, four cone beams a day. Doctor's diagnosing. He's happy. Happy doctor, happy life, wife, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Something. We're happy, right? Uh, and he's happy. He's happy because he gets to do what he does. And he's been really good at diagnosing. So he's used, at diagnosing before we too often was I going in there and like, hey, what's going on, doc? <laughs> and he's doing this number with his thumbs. And I'm like, what's happening? And you're like, well, it was a sinus thing. Oh, because so often our GPs, they'll send it. I don't know. Yep, it's a, there's periapical lesion or uh, abscess, as uh, the GPs will typically call it. But, it's, but he'll look at it and go, oh, it's this or it's that. He loves that. He gets into those details. So we've gotten really good at diagnosing happy, happy, happy. And he's able to do what he does best. All right. Patients know how to read these. They don't, they don't know. Cone beams look great, colorful, rotate the skull, do all that. That's fun and all that. Do that. All right. But patients don't know what they're looking at. If you guys are pointing at an x-ray and doing this and going over here and that, and, oh, and this thing and that and all that, it'd be like you guys, you know, right before break. Okay. Intraoral photos clearly show the need for dentistry. I, I wrote that because that's what it is. It's, that's where, let me see, what are my notes? Oh, no notes. I deleted them. Okay. I'll wing it. Intraoral photos. When I was in a practice and I was teaching them how to use their intraoral camera, because they had a beautiful um, uh, Digidoc camera, took great pictures, they weren't using it. Like, show, let me show you this thing, it's great. We we're taking a bunch of pictures. Now this was a bunch of years ago, I had the, I'd sheared off the mesial of my number 12. Couldn't see it when I was talking, ha la 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 la. But you turn your head, I went way back. But if I, and I could use that camera all around. But when I swooped that camera around, it looked like the Grand Canyon going through there. And that was a beautiful picture, boop. I call that the money shot. Now, I didn't buy. I wasn't going to spend a thousand bucks, but I showed them how to use an Eagle Soft. Hey, put that image into the treatment plan, and we printed it on their nice color printer. And with all my papers and everything, I took that. No color printer over there. What? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, put that into my my folder of goodies, and I took it home. And I was on to the next office, and I had that in a pile of stuff, and it, somehow that had surfaced to the top of my pile at home. And at some point later on, my wife's walking by and she does this number. She looks down and she goes, she's pointing at the picture. Can you see on the camera? She's pointing at the picture. She goes, is that your tooth? Yeah. And then she, finger went right over to the bottom line. She goes, it's only a thousand bucks. You should do it. You want to talk about co-diagnosing? Send home a picture. Oh, I think that's coming up, actually. Send home a picture. Yes. So what about those capacity cavities that would not turn out correctly? Print it. Take a picture of it, print, it, print the x-ray too, you know, and point to it. This is where you can't see it, but you've explained it. You've done all that energy explaining it. Print it. Get a color printer. 99 bucks, Costco. I'm guessing, uh, maybe 129. It's worth it. 24 pound paper. It's about a penny a sheet. Over at Costco as well, you get like 700 in the ream right there. It's good paper. It feels better. Just print it on that. Send their treatment homes in that, treatment plans home with that because that, it's just nicer. And you send them home with a picture. If they don't know, I got to think about it, put it all in there. By the way, this is going into an, a folder. Let me tell you, I don't know if, yeah, here, here's, some, here's some folders. I make everybody get folders. Get some folders, simple. These, you know, about 59 cents a piece. There's a place for the business card. It actually fits, you don't have to jam, make it easy. And you know what we do? I also make them buy, now some of my doctors, they'll buy labels and then they get really fancy and they order printed folders. But just get a, just print on laser labels, your logo, your phone number, right? And I'm gonna, here's some secret sauce I didn't have in the plan. Put your papers in here. You want, you ever watch people stuffing their papers and the receipts? Okay, thanks, because they're, the bib's off. They're now in, I'm going, I'm not, I'm no longer here mode. It's like, no, 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 we still gotta talk numbers, we're gonna do all this, got all that. Take your time, put your nice 24 pound paper in a 59 cent folder with your logo and your thing and their next appointment, right? Let me put all that, and then you want secret sauce number two? Tell them, hey, you know what? Put all your dental papers in here and bring it back in. We're all trained to be able to read all this stuff. So if you ever have questions, you know when they send that explanation of benefits, we call those EOBs, put it in here too so then we can help you decipher it. Because the insurance companies are busy kicking us while we're not looking 
bring those papers in so we can do that. We can we can be in kind and, and give them a little dose of it too. Oh, this is telling you that they only pay for metal fillings in the back. Yeah, that's why they downgraded and paid eighty-eight dollars. Let me show you a picture of metal fillings. So, right, all right. Now, metal fillings. I mean, those are they're solid. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not a well, I don't want them, but. They're, they're still, I have doctors that still place them from time to time, so. Okay, here's, a, here's an x-ray. Nice. I can't wait to get this filling. I want to get this filled. Can we get this filled? I can't wait. I need that filling. A little better. Here we go. Took a picture beforehand. Okay. Little stuff going on here. I don't know. I can't diagnose this, but I'll tell you what. I don't like it. it fix this. Can we get this fixed? Patient says yes. All right. Now, during... During the, uh, during the uh, prep, yeah, procedure, thank you. I'm thinking about three different things at once. I'm down to three. He took another picture. He wanted the patient to see what was going on. The patient loved it. You know what, print this too. Put that in their folder. It's like, this is what you had done. Wow. You know, number 30 is my favorite filling. I love this too. So much anatomy. Uh, but I had a picture like that under there and fractures and all that. So uh, I love that tooth more than anything. Pictures are worth a thousand bucks. That's the way. I, that's why I do this. This is. I, I'm basically imploring you. I'm imploring you to get a color printer. I'm imploring you guys to use your cameras. If you don't have one now, people are buying them from Canada for 150 bucks. You, sometimes they work. You know, it's worth it. <laughs> you need to get trained on it. Oh, sharpening the axe. Some of us weren't here. Tool number two: sharpen the axe. That means we spend time training, we do our meetings, we get smarter, so we, get, we know how to use our cameras. Boy, wouldn't it be nice if Jill was popping off cameras, uh, popping off photos of those money shots in the patient, uh, you know, for the patient to see. That whole time we're waiting for that exam, what is that patient looking at? Uh, that buildup, that lower lingual, ugh, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, I was buying dentistry in the 90s. My doc had a 15-inch or 13-inch TV in the corner and a reveal camera. Thought it was the most amazing thing. I would talk about it to all my friends. Yeah, and I know because I worked in his practice. You didn't get that part too. But I worked in my doctor's practice later on. But I knew because I had to show him how to get his reveal really working in Eaglesoft. He took a picture of the chip on my front tooth. And I used to tell my friends, I love my doc. He's amazing. He, he took a picture of my tooth. I saw it up there. It looked like you'd kick a field goal through that, through that chip. But you looked at it when you're smiling, it's just a little thing. It was amazing, but I wanted it fixed. So I could break it right again. Okay. What else? Secret sauce. Oh, did I already give it? I already gave that secret sauce. Send them home with it. All right? Let the SO, significant others, co-diagnose. It's a huge thing. All right? And they also will appreciate it. All right. Tool number six. I love this one most. Don't tell D'Artagnan, because tool number seven, he's going to help me teach, and we're going to talk about marketing. But my favorite type of marketing, internal. Internal. And this is a big one. All right. Referrals are the best form of new patients. Who, who agrees? Who, know, who wants new referrals? Yes, right, you guys get it. Who wants referrals? All right? Yeah. Why? It's the easiest way to get new patients. Uh, not for everyone. Not for everyone. They're already primed for your office. I'm going to give you the, those who don't have all the referrals coming through. We're going to talk about that. I'll give you some secret to that. Okay. They're primed. They're ready. They trust us. They want to come in. Uh, they come with a higher level of trust. All right. And who refers most? Who's, who refers new patients most? Who? Oh, we have happy patients, women. Okay. Well, women make all of our appointments, I think. Uh, but what I thought was a correct answer, new patients refer new patients. New patients refer new patients. Why? They're excited. They're, ah, I was going to say that. Well, thank you so much, Mercedes. I love that. Spot on. Mercedes. I like that. Uh, new patients refer new patients. Why? They are, they're excited. Why are they excited? Oh, I want crickets. Huh? comfortable, they're happy, they were treated amazing. Okay, I don't know if I'm saying it now or later. I'm gonna say it now, I'll just say it now. Imagine a wall of light switches. You know, you go to, uh, you go to the uh, hardware depot and they've got the light switches you can buy. Picture a whole wall of them. All those light switches are things you're doing right in your practice. 
if, they're, if it's on. If you're doing something right, on. Do you have toilet paper in your bathroom? That's on. Does it smell good? Yeah, it's on. Are you cooking fish at lunch? Off. All right. You know, were we warm and friendly on the phone? Did we get an appointment? Or are we doing everything right? Click, 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 click. You do that. You start paying attention to doing everything right. Referral machine gets turned on. People love it. When you are paying attention in the morning huddle, why are patients coming? When somebody comes into our practice today, and we know their name, we know how to pronounce it, we know what they want, we all greet them. It's that Ritz-Carlton effect, you know, where you walk in and they're, they all have their, they're like, Dominic's coming in. Hi, Mr. Farnokia. Oh, hey, how you doing? Hi, Mr. Farnokia. Oh, we're getting back to you. I feel important here. This is going to cost me a lot. No, it's, it's <laughs> a little, right? But I'm going to pay for it. People pay for what they want, not what they need. So they're going to buy what they want. And what are they going to do? They're going to refer their friends. Uh, I've seen James Clem here in town when my doctor moved away and I needed a dentist and I was all over the place and I was seeing him. He was cash only. I was paying $18.50 per crown and at this kind of energy level I was breaking teeth left and right. I had a few of those and I had to pay for those out of pocket. My Patterson Dental Insurance, I had to, they would stamp it, go and send that. Here you go, give it to put, here's your, here's your insurance form, go send that out. The mailbox is outside. Okay, here's my credit card. But I loved it. I loved the experience. I loved the great, the great work. It was a great. It was good for me. I liked it. Now, when I refer, when patients said, when friends of mine would say, you know, I need a dentist. Where should I go? I had to give them a couple of options because I had to assess: Are they going to be able to pull out a card? Are they going to want to pull out a card? I'm doing the. I was like, you've got your act together. You need to go and see James Clem. He's going to give you a good experience. You're going to get everything you need. Go there. He was doing a lot of full arch stuff at the time, and it was, it was a good experience. And, there, and don't, don't get me wrong. I, just, I don't know all of your dental office experiences, but I can tell you that was a good experience. Now, some people go, oh, i got to pay out of pocket. No, I don't want that. Want, right? I was triggered. I hear it. Want. I don't want that. Okay. Well, I, I had other names, too. So it just fit to where it was. But I primed the pump. I got them ready. So they walked in, they already knew what to expect, they knew that they were gonna be paying for that visit, I set it up for success. And it's not just because I'm just an evangelist for that practice, you know, I just wanted to take care of that practice and I wanna take care of my friends and people. What else have I got in here? Practice evangelists, okay. Oh, light switch, I oh, see it was ahead of me. All right, there's no magic way to ask for referrals. Do you guys ask for referrals? Nobody asks, everybody's always afraid to ask, huh? We don't ask? It's all right, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I've tried. But if you were going to try and ask, I've got some secret sauce for you. Okay? I love this little trick. How was your visit today? First of all, we paid attention to them. If they're new or new-ish, we know who they are. Ritz-Carlton, right? We know who they were. We know what they're about. Check the notes. Morning huddle. Sharpen that axe. Bill, I, you know, Bill, when we saw you on the, on the schedule this morning, the doctor was looking so forward to having you. We, got, we all got excited you were coming in. Oh, I feel special. Yeah, we feel special to have you. And I, at that point, wait a second. Do you know anybody like you that you could refer to the practice? We would love to have a practice filled with people like you. Oh, yeah, I'll think about that. The trick is, you know, if you're going to ask, do it right. Make sure you're set up for success. It's okay to ask. You know, you, all of us in the team. How was your visit today? I love it. I love you guys. You guys are great. There's your moment. Strike. Do me a favor. If you're going to ask for it, here's your best chance. And don't do the, well, it sure would be nice if golly gee whiz. That doesn't, that doesn't work. What, what you need to do is you need to ask a question that makes them say yes or no. Uh, I don't know what book I read, but it was, uh, I think, a Chicago restaurant that um, had a lot. It was a restaurant that was having trouble with no-shows. And all they had to do, because they, they couldn't keep the restaurant filled, all they had to do was change the language when they were making the reservation from, okay, Bill, we got your reservation set for 6 o'clock. If you need to cancel, give us a call. Have a great evening. We'll see you then. Okay? They changed it to, great, Bill, we've got your, your reservation for 6 o'clock. We look forward to seeing you then. Uh, if you need to change it or cancel, will you call us? And they waited for a yes. When, people would say, when you force somebody to say yes, they're more inclined to follow through. And it went way up, and they were able to fill their four tops and eight tops and all those things. OK. Fine. All right, tool. Oh, excellent. OK, before D'Artagnan gets up, he's all excited. I'm going to talk about print. Print's not dead, by the way. Print is not dead. Uh, it is expensive, but I got some secret sauce for you. All right, here's the one you're going to write. Oh, we're doing great for time. Oh, yeah, guys, don't worry. OK, I could slow down even. I won't. I won't. 
Every door direct. Five? Who said they were up since five? Okay, come on. We got this. We can do this. Hang in there. Just a few more minutes. Every door direct. USPS. Write that down. Every door direct. If you're going to ever try print, sending out cards or something for your patients and your mailers, try every door direct. It's, the, it's post office does it. It sends to your mail carrier who you see every day. Well, every day except for that one day they're not. They rotate out. That, they're on a route, right? Well, that route, if you're doing every door direct, everybody on that route gets one of your cards. So it's about 15, 16 cents. Sometimes, I think it's less. It depends on the size of the card. It's, it's like 15 cents per mailer. So you got a route, somebody goes on 500 stops. Well, it's going to cost you, what is that, 75 bucks? Not even, no, 60, okay, math was last chapter. 60 bucks or so. Now, the reason why I do this, I've seen the company that does the, you know, we'll do all the mailing and everything else. I've seen people who, who are writing checks for 25 grand or putting on credit cards for 25 grand or more for that mailers. And they panic and it's not working and they had to buy 100,000 prints and it's killing them and it goes to the same. You go, on, you, you go on every door direct on the uh, USPS site and you get to pick the route. You get to look and see the demographics and how much everybody earns in that route. Oh, it's all businesses. I don't want to send to that route. Oh, I'll go over here. It's only got 10 businesses, 650 homes. Oh, it's affluent. Oh, good. I'm sending over there. Okay. Who's going to make your card? Now, you guys, now, I don't know any graphic artists. I have, I do know, I actually, I don't work with any graphic artists. Let's put it that way. Fiverr2Rs.com. Great resource. It's full of graphic artists and, and people that are techies all over the world. They're waiting for you to do, uh, uh, they'll, they'll do your gig, as they call it. Basically, they'll put up your work for you, and it's cheap. It started out as $5 gigs, and, but you can do some add-ons. I got my logo of the superhero. It looks just like me. You guys saw that at the beginning. 55 bucks. Fiverr.com, I'm giving you all the secret sauce. What I got for $110, well, minus the print. Oh, I didn't put it on here. Printers. I like two printers in the East Bay, Minuteman Press and PS Print. Minuteman Press in Berkeley and PS Print. I think they're in Oakland. Fantastic printers because they're going to bundle them in 100s. USPS wants you to deliver them in 100s, okay, little wrapped in 100s. You don't want to count those. It'll say it on the, when you start doing the USPS. Okay. I think, I think it's time to bring D'Artagnan up here. And so the reason why, as D'Artagnan's getting up, and he's going to have to, let me see if I got any more Online marketing, yep, Dr. Genius and his stuff. Okay, he's going to log into his email and do his thing. Plug into oh, okay. Can he plug into the HDMI? Oh, HDMI. HDMI, no. He says no. Well, if you have HDMI or not. Yeah. Yep, yeah. good, good, good. Okay, and while he's plugging in, he needs to turn this on. Okay, good. While he's plugging in, I'm going to talk about why I've got a company coming up and talking because uh, I've sold a lot of websites, I've worked with a lot of companies. Marketing is important. I don't want to do it all. I don't want you to do it all. I like Fiverr.com and all that. That's on the cheap end of things. It's, we're doing it ourselves, but it, it's, it saves $10,000. I've seen too much savings. But having something done right is important. But this is about tools and about knowing what you're doing. And you need to know what you're doing. So D'Artagnan, and I love Dr. Genius because Dr. Genius has, has been fantastic for when I found them a year ago exactly in one of my Sacramento offices, I answered a phone call. It was overflow. I'm not going to let it go. Bing, how can I help you? This is Dominic. And D'Artagnan did his pitch. I'm like, all right, let's see. I always put him through their paces. Did I not? And I'm, I wanted to see what do you got going on and what do you have? My biggest question, by the way, my biggest question for all these people who call, are you month to month or are you on a contract? Are you on a contract? That's a big question because this whole two-year contract, one-year contract, 350 bucks or whatever a month, whatever it is, it's a crusher. So that was one thing. I've worked with a lot of, in, of marketing companies. I still work with a couple, but I've, the most of my clients have, have, I've got five clients now working with D'Artagnan and Dr. Genius. It's a big company. I've worked with the two or threes. I've worked with the 50 or 60, but I want him to teach us what to look for because no matter if you work with him or you work with your companies, you need to know what you're doing with it. It's important. Is your marketing working? What, are, what does it all mean? I'm going to do some deciphering while he's talking about, uh, about what they do and marketing. So you're going to listen, and I'm going to try and decipher. Yeah, he's going to do a little yep. bit of his so, spiel. And just to kind of piggyback off of how Dominic and I first met, called into an office. They still haven't signed up. They signed up with another company, and they're pretty much, I don't know, underperforming, and they know it. But ultimately, I called the office the other day. She fired everyone. She's answering her own phones. She's pretty much underwater. He knew she was sinking, tried to help her, and she continues on that path. And now she's down to herself. 
Um, but he it's, sent me. It's a, it's, it's a harsh story. story. Harsh story. It's a harsh story, yeah. and it's more than just the marketing. But the, the phone's not ringing. I mean, there is a lot involved in a rescue of a practice. Uh, D'Artagnan. I didn't coach him very well on this. So oh no, no. Well, he's, uh, he's doing good. They're all panicking over here. We're, we're losing our audience. Don't panic. Okay, good. <laughs> we lost him. Yeah. Let's let's go favorable. Perfect. So let's talk about Smiles Dental Care, which is in Mountain View. So he decided, hey, I have a client. You know, they're looking for marketing. They've had some struggles in the past. Let's go ahead and give you this client. Speak to them if they're interested. Then you know, we'll see what happens. And then if this works out, I'll start to send other referrals. Um, we did a great job for Smiles. I'll go ahead and kind of jump over a little bit here to Christina's review here. So this is from. Christina, who's the office manager there, she gave us five stars. This is when they first signed up with us, said that, you know, she mentioned me by name in there a couple of times and said that they've had struggles in the past and ultimately they think they hit it out of the park. Uh, so let's flash forward now. And I want to say real quick, Christina has, I think, a marketing degree, a definitely a business degree. I told her, I want you to grill D'Artagnan. I want you to learn everything, glean what you can from him. So he had to educate her. Like I said, learn it like you're going to do it yourself. And, the, and she actually knows it. She speaks the language. She gets it. Go ahead. Yeah. And here's a text that she sent the other day. Uh, we did a little bit of a report, which I'm going to show here in a second. And this is pretty much their numbers. So they signed up with us in May. Everything went live on the 1st of July. And from July 1st to February, end of February this year, they've made, if you look here, they've made $106,000 from our services. And from January to February alone, they've made $35,000 additional from our services. They're on track currently to make over $211,000 this year from our services, and they're paying us $599 a month. And, you know, they love it. So I'll ultimately kind of jump forward a little bit here, jump into some of the results here. So, you know, seeing is believing, but let's go ahead and jump into, say, my client who's in New York, New York. 8.6 million people in the area. Here's their population, 40,000 people. Pretty much every service they provide, they rank number one for. So here is ClearCorrect. They don't offer Invisalign, but they rank number one, Uptown Dental NYC, and number two, Uptown Dental NYC there. And if you look down here, they are even number three. So one through three there. If you go to implants, they're featured here on the right-hand side. They also rank number one down here. They may even be number two, maybe? Okay, so number one there, don't worry about these ads. They're marketing to us here in the Bay, but that's them there and that's them featured there. So one and two, crown, same thing here. They are featured, there they are one. And I want to say, and are you guys following, so part of the education, and I've seen this and I understand this very well, you know, organic search. You guys have heard these words. I don't know if you understand, but your website, when I searched all of you guys before coming in, I wanted to know a little bit about you. I'm searching you guys. I'm looking to see, and I wasn't typing dentist. I was actually typing the doctor's names, and some people didn't show up on the first page at all for their own name. I had somebody, I had one of your clients from the East Coast also come up Above with the it. same name of somebody who's in our class tonight. So, I, you know, this is where he's just talking about ranking, and it's so important. And I'm gonna, I got some more Right. And on what that. this really matters, so in the last one is veneers. So here they are featured on the right hand side again, and then they are number one, there they are number two, so one, two, and three there. So three spots on the first page of Google. Why does this matter? Every day people are looking for your services on their mobile phones or on their computers, looking for dentists near me, uh, crowns, implants, dentures, whatever. Somehow they're finding you or your competitors online every single day. Our job is to get you more visibility. As you can see here in the largest city in the country, New York, New York, our client ranks one, two, and three on the first page of Google. Imagine the amount of calls they're gonna get every month. Um, and that's what we wanna do for all the most profitable services that you guys provide. In a little bit here, we'll jump into how we do it and why we're so successful and also some reviews and so forth. But ultimately, again, that's pretty much what you can expect there and also how he and I met and why he's now sent us five clients pretty fast here so it's growing mm -hmm. all right so let's go with what else you got and now um, I want to talk about how what they can do what can they do whether it's with your current company or people who are calling you what are they asking for what do they need to understand what's the difference what sets differences apart for what they're doing what they need to be doing because we're all marketing one way or another my favorite of course referral marketing that's internal but you still have to be found if I say go see my doctor they're gonna type the name in you still need to be found that's important, but what? Right. Okay. Um, so here's our reviews. We've got 137 total reviews. 
uh, 4.9 star rating, so just a fraction shy of being perfect. Any of these doctors on here, you can literally search by name to verify that they are saying these things about us. Mm. I'm not really sure why it's not scrolling down. But again, 4.9 star rating on Google. I encourage you guys to read those. Um, but let's look at how we get to where we are. So, for example, first thing that we do is fix all your listings. You'd be surprised at <laughs> the inaccuracies online. So we go in, we find any old doctors who were associated with the practice, any wrong addresses, wrong names. Uh, for example, there's someone here today who there's a doctor. We talked about that last night. You want to? No, we're not, first of all, name, address, phone. It's called a NAP listing. So I'm going to translate mm -hmm. his text speak for all of us. Right. NAP, N A P, name, address, phone number. What he's talking about right now is it's important that your name, address, phone number is the same all over the internet. Google everywhere. cares everywhere, right? Google only wants to see one name, one address, one phone number. Why? Because if Google has Dr. Johnson at 123 4th Street and Bing has Dr. Susie at 39th Street. Google's confused. They understand that their listing may be right or it may be wrong. So what they do is they reach out to the top 75 search engines. Everyone knows about Bing, Yahoo, you know, they even reach out to Yelp and Yellow Pages and things like that. But there's a lot of other ones that they reach out to. So what we do is we correct all those listings so where it's just one name, one address, one phone number. We also do a lot of digging to find anyone else who's associated with the practice and get them removed. So the last reason why they should have you not be shown is because there's inaccuracies. Um, there's a tool I have here to test that. Um, later on, I'd love to have some volunteers kind of look and see what you know your nap looks like. And so, are we allowed to talk about that? Well, I, I, I guess wanted to kind of touch on that a little. Sure, bit. I think Just, so. And I wanted to say so to keep translating. So nap listings are important. If you bought a practice from somebody, I bet you their name is is still assigned to your phone number. Yes, I know. And uh, there's and there's other things like that. Suite number versus uh, number versus street versus st. Those are all important. Mm -hmm. Now I want to say this, and and because I stand and I love working with Dr. Genius so much, I can say this. There's other companies. There's one called Yext. Y E X. Well, we use Yex. Really? We use Yex for our listings. Okay, that's good. So that I was just going to say, they're a company that does this. They do that specifically. They're able to go through and do all the cleanup. See, that's well, the concept. They, they, so they don't do all the cleanup. What they ah. do is they do a blanket. So they will have it to where everyone will have one name, one address, one phone number, but yet they don't go in and contact those um, websites slash listings to get the information removed. So they just put another one on top where we uh, go in, we do we use them to blanket it, but we also contact them individually uh, to get all the old stuff removed as well. Huge. So there's so but you're I using them as a service, but then you're also doing the correcting. Right. Because I've tried to do all the correcting for a doctor. I've had doctors going, I don't want to spend it, can you just do it? And I have a hard time saying no. I'm I kinda like a doctor, I give it away. And I've done it, and I've spent days and days and days just waiting and trying to get it. Did you get the postcard? Because we need the PIN number from it. It's a lot of work, so I love having a crew doing that. So that's important. As you guys are looking into this, you're going to type in your phone number in Google and see what you get. Okay, keep going. Yeah, yep. you can. You so let me go ahead and, and then next thing we're going to jump into is going to be structured data. Who knows what structured data is? Anyone? I don't even know structured data. Structured data? Yep. Oh, yeah. So like it's the keywords inside the content, uh, sounds good, I like that too. Right, so very, very close. Uh, what it is is the way that your website communicates to Google on the back end. So I'm gonna copy this information here and kind of give a quick breakdown of what it is. So if I do this here, and again, right there, structured data testing tool from Google. If I go in here, so this is the front end here that makes the website look the way it does on the left hand side. On the right hand side, this is your structured data. This is the way that your website communicates to Google all the important information about your practice. So first thing, there's 18 items. If I click on it here, we let Google know, type, dentist. What do you guys think this tells dentist, or tells Google? You're a dentist. This is a dental website. We let them know, go and verify this information here with Wikipedia. So Google goes and reads what a dentist is here on Wikipedia, lots of information. Google reads very fast as a machine. I go down here, there's even more. We let them know your Google Plus, Yelp, I'm sorry, your Facebook and your Yelp. So when you get those positive reviews, you get rewarded faster. Also, when we use social media for blogs, which we'll tougher, uh, cover in a little bit here, 
that also connects it faster. Go so down here. How are they going to know to do this for their current stuff, for example? Is this something they would do or they'd it's, have you do? We do it. Okay. So it's, Ask you it's, to, it's, hey, can you run my structured data test? Right. I can email this to everyone. You can also just Google, Google structured data testing tools, test it on your own. It's out there. Uh, but the big one here is geo coordinates, latitude and longitude. You guys know why this is important? Yeah. Address, in particular, cell phones. 85% of searches are done through phones. Google shows you what's around you versus what's back home. So for example, if I want to eat now, Google's going to show me what's in Santa Rosa versus Orange County, California, where I came from. Same exact thing here. This is us connecting Google to your practice down to the pinpoint there. So that's just one. I'll touch on just service pages briefly here. Again, most of you guys I've already tested don't have this. I don't want to call anyone out, but feel free to yeah, volunteer <laughs> or we can do it later on here. You uh, want us to look at your stuff. So here's, yeah, they do 15 yours? different procedures here. Yeah, we can. Perfect. Dr. Bauer. They do 15 different procedures here. If I go down, here's one here, dental implants, as you can see here. Uh, we build that out for each one of your services. So Google will go and read more articles about implants, structured data is put in there, and also the geo coordinates. So hmm. uh, Dominic, you want to kind of find the website there? Uh, is and it KennethBauerDDS.com or? Yeah. yeah. All right. This is why you need experts. I do it right? Yes. Perfect. Pro sites, I bet. That looks like so pro sites. Here's yours. I know it. Yeah, I've had a lot of. They used to rank. I had a lot of. I had people up here in Sonoma County that would rank in on pro sites. See, and while he's doing that, you know, another thing that's I read an article and I've been watching for, not only because I used to when I would I supplemented by selling websites. It kind of seems like I'm doing it now too, but I, <coughs> but it was important because in, in 2011 when I started doing this on my own. Nobody had, not, there wasn't enough websites out there. People didn't have any idea. And I used to say, you know that one day Facebook's going to have 100 million users. I would say that back then. Oh, it's going to be a lot. You need social media. You need all this. It's ironic because I don't know. I think it's 8.2 billion uh, users. No, I'm teasing. That's more. But anyway, uh, the next thing that we're seeing is that people are going to, because I used to say also, oh, they're going to be searching on their phones. They're going to search for you on your phones. I couldn't imagine searching on my phone. I cannot, can't imagine not. Well, guess what's next? Voice. You have to be able to, they have to, uh, can you find Ken Bauer's uh, dental office in Santa Rosa area? And that's, and Siri is going to, sorry, no, nope, doesn't exist or whatever. I don't know what, but that's next. It's, uh, it's crazy. What do you got? Yep. So here's the results. First thing, two errors and one warning. And there's two, only two items. So again, 18 versus your two. And then you have two errors, two warnings where ours was clean there. If I jump inside of it here, if you look, they do tell them that you're a dentist, but they don't point them in directions to learn more about what dental, what dentists do. Here's your website. This doesn't really matter because Google knows it's your website because they're already on it here. Here's your address. I'm sorry, here's your name. And here's your address. No geo coordinates. And there's also, they don't like a couple images, a name, and a price range. So pretty much you're telling Google your website that you're a dentist, your address, your phone number, and that's pretty Can much Can they it. call pro sites and say, hey, we want more structured data? Is that how that works? If um, I don't even know if he's with pro sites. Typically, pro sites doesn't put any structured data on the back end. Oh, it's not. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah she's looking, right? Oh, nice. Someone, Is that a BlackBerry? Pro sites doesn't even do structured data for the oh, most PBHS. part. Oh, PBHS. Oh, they're, they're, they're local. They're the big dogs in town. PBHS. Yeah. So we, huh. we, we do take a lot of people from them as well. Yes, Doc. That we get a lot of clients from there. Do you write? Do you write? Did you write your own website? No, but oh. my husband can do that. Yeah, well, st structured data. Have him look into it. Yeah. For sure. Did your oh. husband build your current website as well? No. no. Yeah. So, it's it's, it's okay. it takes a lot of time, takes a lot of effort, and that's why a lot of companies like uh, pro sites don't even offer it or do it because it, again it's yeah. a lot of work. But again, we know it's going to help you. And this is why we're able to have so much success. And that's just one, one part of the puzzle as well. Um, so we've hit on NAP. We've hit on structured data. And we do. We have a question. It's a great question. So they're based here in Santa Rosa, as a matter mm -hmm. of fact. Sounds like you also have PBHS. No, it sounds like they're going to get a couple phone calls tomorrow. They're going to probably be looking <laughs> me up. I love PBHS. Those guys are great. Uh, Can we test yours? Can we look? No. No, <laughs> no. no okay. worries. You know, 
Yours? No, in contact. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh, ouch. And okay, you're, trust me, they're getting phone calls. It's, it's, structured data. Yeah, once, it's, once it is built, just type in Google Structured Data Testing Tool. This same exact thing will come up. Test it. If they don't have it, let them know how you feel about it. And also read up on it. It's one of the top ranking factors. Yeah. It's, it's painful to outlay the money for marketing <clears throat> and not know. That's why I, when I said fly up here, he's in Southern California, mm -hmm. and there's a ton of people. I only work with D'Artagnan, but he's got a team. Of, they, their team does all that. We, all yeah, we've got just over 80 people all oh, under one yeah, roof. You guys have grown in a year. So I, I flew him up because I was like, I want you to talk about this tech stuff, and I'm going to try and decipher it. And I'm, I didn't even know about structured data. I've seen this, and if you go through PBHS, ProSites, and everything, they all have their, <clears> their thing. But I've watched his stuff work. Everybody, all my clients seem to be succeeding. I'm like, okay, something's working, secret sauce. So I wanted to explain it. But if you can get them to do it without a charge, be nice, uh, get it done, right? Okay. All right. So we also write monthly blogs for you. Uh, another one of the top ranking factors is backlinks. So if I go to just, and this is, again, something you guys can do here. If you Google top ranking factors for Google, they're going to spit back, you know, this 10 bullet pointed section. Number one is content. We'll jump into content in a little bit here, um, but freshness, backlinks, and mobile first. We've gone, we touched on schema, which is structured data, another uh, word for it, but let's go ahead and jump into backlinks. Should so they know that? Schema next to structured data, schema. It's a, yeah, it's another translation for structured data. Oh, I um, thought it was a Russian uh, beer. I could use a beer. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying. Dad jokes. Dad jokes. Huh. So let's touch on content and backlinks. So every month we write you guys blogs about your most profitable services. Um, implants, Invisalign, you know, whatever, dentures, whatever you're looking to go after. Which is how, when I showed you earlier, my client who ranks number one, two, and three, you say, well, how did that happen? Well, your website can rank one spot, and the blogs that we write you can take up multiple spots. Uh, we've got people all around the country who take up, you know, half the page of Google because of their website, and then those uh, backlinks from those uh, blogs. So again, it's about a thousand words. It's about your most profitable service, and again, it helps you rank better for those services faster. Um, content is king. Our websites come with a hundred thousand words of content, and I'll jump into smiles. I want to say something that you go jump that in there, huh? Hundred thousand words. Hundred thousand. Okay, words, so I didn't at know. At least. Okay. Uh, I've always said, you've got to write content. You've got to create content. And if you guys saw my website, which I should be encouraging you, go to my website. They don't make it. It doesn't have 100,000 words. It should, uh, as verbose as I am. But that's the challenge. I've always said, you've got to make content. Just put stuff in there. Add stuff. Because you're going to have a login to your back end, so you can do it. We, we don't. That's part of sharpening the ax. When you're having a meeting, maybe we start talking about, let's write some content about what we are, what we're doing. That's why, this is why companies, and they probably do offer a service. Oh, you want content? Okay, that's X amount a month. We can do that. You know, there's a reason for it. Right. And, and yep. each site starts at 100. 100,000 starting point, and then as we that. add the blogs, it'll go even larger. And depending on how many additional services you have, pretty much 100,000 is the base, and it will go up even higher to hit on all uh, procedures that you offer. So it can launch with a lot more than that as well. And we'll kind of jump into it. So here's dental implants for crowns. I'm sorry, for Smiles Dental. If you go here, here's the whole page here about, you know, their implants. But if you look on the right-hand side here, those are the blogs there that we're writing for them, their recent blogs. You're scrolling you a little the, fast, dude. Sorry. <laughs> if you look on, on the right. The, <laughs> if you look on the right side here, so there's related topics about implants. So am I a candidate for dental implant? Implant restoration dental implant surgery, so forth. So those are more pages about more services. Um, and if you look here, so this is just their, this is something that Dominic and I did last night on just their in dental implant page. They've got 30,000 words of content. I saw that. It's the number one ranking factor. That's why we hit it so hard. Uh -huh. And that's why our websites come with so much content. If you look here, we mentioned dental by itself 816 times, implant singular 387 times, implants, Plural, 334, their city um, view, because they're in Mountain View, so we separate it 256 times. We mentioned Mountain, I'm sorry, View, uh, 200 for Mountain. Go over here to second most. We mentioned dental implants together as one phrase, 238 times. Mountain View together, 200 times. Dental implant singular, 158 times. Again, 
Tons of content. Wordcounter.net. Yep. Okay, that's what you were talking about last yep. night. Uh, Word that's another counter. one. Wordcounter.net. I'm writing. Test <laughs> you your care. website. Find out how much content is on there. You can. So he was talking, and it was it was happening fast. So round two. I'm now starting to understand. Go Highlight, ahead. copy, paste. You know, control all. Copy, paste it into wordcounter.net, and it'll tell you all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, now it's and making sense. So again, why does it matter so much? Google says it right there out in front. Content is king. Content quality is the number one ranking factor. So if your site doesn't have much content on it, that's probably a big part of why you're not ranking. Um, and just to kind of breeze through what else we do, so we do help you get more reviews. We have a review tool which is included in there. Uh, very easy, put in the first name, last name, phone number, email is optional. Within a minute or two, it'll shoot you a text. Allows you to pick Google, Yelp, or Facebook to leave a review. Most likely going to be a five-star review because it has a qualifying question. Would you recommend our dental clinic to a friend? Yes, I would. Okay, leave a review here. Pick wherever you want to leave it. If it says no, it goes to a re I'm sorry, a feedback card. Fill out whatever your complaint is. This gets emailed directly back to you. Allows you to fix the problem at its source while also avoiding that negative review. Keep in mind, once that review is out there, there's nothing you can do outside of drowning it, getting more reviews, unless if it uses like racial slurs or you know depicting someone's character or you know something really really harsh and it's out of bounds. There's nothing you can do outside of just getting more. I'm gonna I'm gonna interject on that because uh, review sites are a uh, double-edged sword and a very sore topic for us in dental, and it's it's not fun. Um, one thing I've learned some things. I don't know if this is all the way, but I. Mm -hmm. Validating a bad review by replying to it or when other people mark it as useful, funny, or whatever, that validates that negative review and now it's even harder to remove. So I used to say, oh, I'd encourage, reply to those negative reviews. No, I'll tell you, when I'm sorting through Yelp, I filter the nonsense. I know what I'm looking for, but when I see a theme, I can see what's going on. Oh, you know, seven people saw roaches at this restaurant. Okay, I think uh, that's, that's not just one bad night, that's, that's a theme. Same concept, right? <laughs> Maybe not that excessive, but you get where I'm going. Because we see and hear a lot of things. Our team members get yelped for our practices. So, and it gets tricky. But I think by, by letting it go, and I love where you had said this, and I do always encourage, you wanna flood it with positive reviews. So finding a way, sending a text, or using those services where you can get more reviews, the positives, is key. Yep. So here's one of our clients, Stone Canyon Dental. They have a perfect 5.0 rating, 128 total reviews. So pretty solid. North Tampa Dentistry, these guys have a 4.9, 234 reviews. So these guys are using the, the tool all the time. It's there for you, very, very useful. All right, any questions before we jump into tracking and how we make it very transparent? Any questions at all about this stuff like this and the ranking? Are we talking? Yeah, the, pretty much the why and what matters. Anything that we've touched on so far. Any questions? Go, okay, we'll keep moving. Anything online, Matt? Okay, cool. All right. All so right. let's jump into how you track everything. Giving so, you some tools. It's been about tools tonight, right? I wanted a, to make sure you guys had stuff. Here's a look into our portal here, which is something that we'll train you guys on. But here's Smiles Dental Care. So this is their actual numbers here. If you look at rankings. If I go here, they're ranking for 80 keywords on the first page of Google. If you look at last month's performance here, they last month got 74, so let's go ahead and move this total calls out of there so you can, guys can see those charts. I need one of these graphs for when Dominic started helping the practice, and then, oh yes, and then where Dominic left, it came back. <laughs> right, so this that. is, last month they got 74 new patient calls, and they got 42 web forms. Those Almost. web forms are the part on the website where you put in, I, this is my name, this is what I'd like to book an appointment for. You get an email, you call them, they convert at over 80% over for sure. Christina said they convert somewhere near 90% on these. Um, very easy to use, so here it again, 78, so 40. I, I see, we're in the portal, this is and the portal. I started doing the portal training. I've watched, the, I've done this back end stuff, I've been trying to mess with my own website. I hate this stuff, because it's, it looks like Neo and the Matrix and all the gibberish that comes up and down the screen, I don't know. I made them train me. I've been watching this with all my clients now and I'm making them train. It's taking time. Now it's starting to make sense what this all means. There's a lot of data. I actually, I'll tell you, I'll be honest, I listen to the phone calls. That's another thing that comes yeah. through these. Yep. Right. You guys can listen to the calls. We can't because there's HIPAA laws, but you can listen to every call that comes in through our services. 
You can use it for training purposes. You can use it to keep us living in a glass house. We're month to month, so we want to make it as easy for you guys to track results as possible because if not, how do you know? Oh, I feel like we've been busy. Well, look at the portal, doctor. It's all there. So anything else, Dom? Well, and it, so I want to break this down because this is because even PBHS has back off as a portal. We don't use it. It's sharpening the axe. We're too busy in our business, not working on our business. Use your tools. Maximize it. It better be this awesome. Make them be this awesome. Um, but, you know, total calls, 332 phone calls with their tracked phone number. When they call in, so now what I'm seeing is they'll call in. So they're doing, where they call in, you have to press one for new patient, two for, for existing, correct? Other, other way. One uh, for one existing, for, two for new. Two we for new patient. The, we want the easiest option to be the one that doesn't give us credit so that, because people are in a rush. Oh, I'll just push one. Right. We'll count that as existing. We don't want to take credit for I it. I like that. So. That's why they're saying total calls and how many new patients, people who hit two, 74. How long was the average duration? Oh, that's, these people need my class. Oh, this is my people. Never mind. Your, well, two minutes and 30 two and seconds. Two and a half minutes for a bad. new patient call? Eh, I'd like a few more minutes. Let's work, yeah. Build a reputation. You know, come on. We're getting them to, we're trying to, we're trying to create a little bond before they come in. Because I tell you what, they're not in until they get in and we've won them in. So this, this is just a, a little more. Yeah. I like and eight you minutes. can, and that's the thing too, is that you can listen to it. You know, are they actually converting? Are they coming in? Can't be. Yeah. Well, I'll that's tell you. Is average. this smiles? This is smiles. Well, I'll, I'll be honest. You know, they are. People are coming. You know what? Let me tell you. Silicon Valley. These people come in here with their headsets on, and they're on a conference call. They, the, there's Facebook, Apple, and Google employees, and everybody else, and startups, and all that. Go, 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 go. There's a. I'm a friends with a doctor at Facebook. Fantastic guy. I'm like, how is it that we still have Facebook patients? Then he goes, well, because we can't get into our clinic. You know, it's they're packed, and so they're coming out. They're on conference calls. They'll say, oh, hold on a second, Profi. Jill has to stop what she's doing. Yeah, I approve, or yeah, web forms, or whatever. I don't know. There's. Absolutely, 100% serious. As a matter of fact, I was helping. We were doing. I mean, the, 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 the offices allows for the patients to come in and. If you were in Mountain View, you. if you were in Mountain View, you would, because you got 16 days of hygiene churning. You have to, and we don't have that here in Sonoma County. I'm telling you, every region, everywhere I go, has something different. We have what we have. You know, can you schedule during crush? You know, you know what I mean, or whatever. It's a little tricky. We got to work around it. Paso Robles has the same problem, right? Okay, so there's things like that. Oh, we had late rains. We can't. I uh, got to cancel. That happens. So Silicon Valley has. I got. I have a. You know, they're canceling last minute. It's tricky. It's a. It's a. It's tough. Well, I got a meeting. So we. They. They accept meetings. You know, it's something. I sold two snoring appliances in the same same morning. And out of five, it was very busy with our snoring doctor who was in there. Our sleep appliance doctor. Two. They both were on for, uh, conference calls that morning, and they were they were doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Right, let's let's get let's move it forward. HSA card comes out. It's like, oh, oh okay. come on, doc. Chop chop. They're signing. <laughs> it's moving fast down there. Where's the fastest dental office? <laughs> Smiles Dental. I don't know. That, that's not yet, but it's coming. All right. <laughs> no, it's okay. And she was asking, is that serious that uh, that patients actually do that? Do we still have people watching us? My mom's still on. Lover. Not a problem. So this is kind of cool. I, uh, I'll i tell you, because I'm watching, because I was looking and going, how come we don't have, because Smiles had tons of calls and everything, and so I had to start listening to find out why why is it that there's not 200 new patients? Well, part of it, availability. Part of it is, you know, it's, it's we don't have, and he strives, he wants holes in the schedule. Hey, stop calling so many patients. <laughs> we still call. Uh, but you know he wants to availability. We got to be able to get somebody in quickly, and boom. So yeah, it's fast paced down there. It's something else, and very competitive. Now Smiles has been. I've been working with him off and on since 2013, and I've been with him and seen his marketing. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm ashamed to say it. I did sell him a website and, and marketing company before. It was mediocre, and we just didn't hit it. Still worked. It was a good base. But what was happening was he was investing at that time a thousand bucks a month on his marketing. So somebody who was tweaking on the websites and everything else, and he was ranking and he was paying for clicks and doing all that. Then he had somebody else who got into it, um, and then I got D'Artagnan in there last May, and it's actually been just turnkey and just going. At that point now, it's it's no, it's just happening. So it's tricky because it's so competitive. But he had a base; he's already started. Compared to somebody who doesn't have a website at all, it takes a minute. But I've, it's funny, even uh, uh, my prosthodontist in Danville, his website's not even up yet. 
but he's already ranking higher on a bunch of keywords and stuff because they just were cleaning up their nap, mm -hmm. nap listings. See, did you guys learn nap listings? <laughs> Wait till you blow all your friends' minds. So here's, the next here's a look at the analytics. So this is what really, really matters here. Oh, so okay. this isn't from us. This is straight from Google. Google Analytics is built into your site. So oh. over the last 30 days, they had 2,500 people visit their site. And the big thing here is the bounce rate. So only 6% oh, of people are leaving their site without making an action, clicking around. And on average, they're on there for a minute and 41 seconds. Okay, stop there. Bounce rate. Write that down. So when you guys are looking at your portals and you're trying to figure out what you got, you want to know. You call them. Hey, how do I find my bounce rate? Because you want to know is six percent like average? Because you know no. that seems. So, so that means that means when how long that somebody's gotten on and then they left. You know when you're sitting there waiting for a site and you're ah oh, forget it and I I'll just go back and click next one. That's I'm bouncing before that thing even loaded. That's that's the speed time to load. But did they go in? They didn't like it and they're off right away. That's a bounce, right? Is that right? Yeah, so they're not clicking around. And if you look here, Google says a good bounce rate, excellent bounce rate actually is 26 to 40%, uh, 41 to 51 is roughly average. So these guys are again at 6% if you look here. And they have a lot of people visiting their site. But this is the big one here, because I know some of the stuff is boring. <laughs> what I'm really matters exciting. Here? So over the last 30 days, 10% of the people who visited their website went to them directly, looked for Dr. Hall, looked for Smiles Dental Care, typed in the address or phone number, went directly for them. This is where the new patients come in. 83% of people who visited their site last month didn't know that they existed. They found them organically by searching for a service or something that they offer and then ended up on their site. Here's an actual breakdown here. 2,200 people found them last month without knowing they existed. That's from us driving that traffic in. So basically doing a search, so organic searching. So another last, we're wrapping up here. We're doing good. You guys are hanging in there. Uh, but organic searching, you want to know, are you ranking, are you got people who are clicking and finding you organically, and that's where this number, and I don't know what theirs will be, they might have a different term, but that's a Google term, but you want to know, am I being found, am I ranking, and are people clicking on it because they've searched Dentist Santa Rosa? So that's where the new patients come in. Again, direct is good, you know, someone referred them over, look for Dr. Hall by name, this is where the new patients come in. These people didn't know they existed, they had 2,200 shots at having people come in as a new patient. And that's how it's been pretty much every month. So, you know, that's, that's what awesome. we do. We get you found. We do it the right way. Certified Google partner, been around for almost 11 years. And, you know, we're number one in this industry, according to us. So, yeah, you know, according to my mom. Job. My mom says they're great. <laughs> um, people agree with us. So. <laughs> I love it. Uh, as you can see, he's got a good pitch. I like it. It's been working for everything I like. So here's, here's what I'm going to do. And then we're going to wrap because we did good. We're going to stay until the last person, until Matthew leaves. Then until, until the alarm set, then we're going. Uh-oh. Not that late, maybe. Uh, but we're sticking around. You know, you want to talk with D'Artagnan, you want to talk with me, please hang out after. I'm happy to. Anybody online, you guys can send us messages. Uh, D'Artagnan's here for a day while you're leaving the next morning. So we're Thursday actually going to go to a couple of our clients, and we're running around. You want to visit. I'm driving. We'll be happy to come by. I also, uh, I love doing what I do. You have questions. I want to be contacted. Oh. I'll make sure and then everybody. My information is in that envelope. Um, we are giving Dominic, anyone Dominic sends over slash anyone from this event gets a thousand dollar discount off of the web development fee because they know Dominic. Um, so there's an incentive there. But all my contact information is there. That's my direct line, my direct email. We typically do meetings over the phone and internet. But of course, we can either come by tomorrow or do something here tonight to kind of look at what, what your info looks if like. If you want him to evaluate your stuff, you can. Please write down phone numbers, because I'm, I'm going to give you out my old print media here if you want to. But uh, my phone number, 707, feel free to write it. 707, this is my mobile. So don't, don't share it. No, I'm teasing. 707-529-3997. Dominic at Your Dental Reputation, or now Dental Practice Rescue. But I'll give you a card if you want. D'Artagnan, please give him also your direct line as yep. well. So 949-247-2031 is my direct line. Email is djohnson at doctor spelled out genius, G-E-N-I-U-S dot com. Awesome. How'd you guys do? Good? We did it? We survived? Oh, wait, Martin wants us to stay an extra 30 minutes. No, nobody can leave. Go ahead. <laughs> Come on in. Thank you, Martin. Thank you guys. That was great. Oh, thank you very, very much. much. <laughs> thank you. That's fun. That's that's what we want to see. That's, I like that's that. That's fantastic. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, please, uh, your uh, 
Uh, certificates uh, are on the uh, table at, uh, near the door where you came in. And I want to thank you all for coming. We, we also have an uh, event uh, this Friday, a little more clinical. Uh, and there's uh, brochures on that as well as our full April lineup. Uh, so please uh, sign up as soon as you can. Thank you very much for coming. Yeah, thank you, Martin. And how did I do? Thank you very much. How did I do? Would you like more of that? Would you like to see something else? Yeah? Maybe a Friday morning instead? No. Oh, yeah, no. Okay. Tuesday nights work? Okay. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come get some swag. Come talk to us. I'll make sure you guys get. And thank everybody uh, online yeah, for, uh, for sure. sitting thank through. You so uh, look on your uh, email for okay, your guys. quiz. The quiz has out. been sent to everybody, so please send that in. Putting up with my shenanigans. Uh, the sooner you get it uh, yeah, done, uh, the sooner you get your <laughs> certificate. <laughs> also, um, I want to thank you, uh, uh, our producer, awesome uh, Matt Van Tassel, for doing oh, good, such okay. a fine job and handling all the questions and all the cameras. I know, right? He's doing a great job. Thank, thank you. you. Did I give you? Yes, I did. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I know. We were looking at you guys' site. I know. You look very familiar. Which one's Summit? In Petaluma. Runner Park. Why is it Summit? Oh, Soon Mio. Ah, that's right. Oh, how you been? So I moved to Colorado and then I came back. It's fun. Thank you. Wow. She's mine. Right? Snagged. Yeah, good. Yeah, there's, there's some challenges over there. I know, right? That's right. I know you did have a. Did you want Somebody wants it. See how it is? By you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want one? Oh, I love it. Thank you so much for participating. Yeah. So your your shared practice. Did you guys um? Did you buy? Doug? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's hard. That was hard. You guys have to clean that up. I know. Well, I want to ask. Let's ask D'Artagnan. Do you put on your website, formerly Doctor? You know, somewhere buried in there, but it's in there. You know, I had some. When we have about doctors, we have it in memorial. Oh, that's nice. We kept kind of like all of his original bio that he had. And then yeah. I I didn't look, scroll that far, but I know I know you came from Poland when you were 15. Yeah. Oh, wow. East Coast, and uh, oh, thank you. Yes. Tiny practice.